exploit and debase its workers just as if they were members of a giant multinational corporation. From the moment I started the store six years ago, I wanted to make sure that every employee here at Gilman's felt like they were nothing more than a cog in a giant machine just as if they had worked at one of our larger corporate competitors. Denblaker said that despite having only 10 employees and a single location, he's managed to implement a number of unique policies to significantly reduce employee morale, including forbidding sales clerks to sit down during lengthy shifts, reducing their number of days with paid time off, and insisting on humiliating pat-downs during lunch breaks to ensure they never felt like trusted or valued employees. Other small businesses might have given me benefits or, you know, let me take a day off. But everyone here at Gilman's does their best to treat you like you're a totally replaceable tool for generating profit. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and you are invited. If you want to join us here, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Here tonight, you've got Ian. And nobody. All right. So, um, nobody, there was some pretty big news today in the world of news. Normally, the news isn't about the news, but in this case, the news is about the news, and I'm talking... It's meta-news. I'm talking about the resignation of one of arguably the most important journalists in the last decade, uh, Glenn Greenwald. Do you know who that really? is? Do you know who uh, that is? Yeah, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. Um, I know, I definitely know his name, yeah. So that's the guy who uh, was basically the the main guy behind getting Edward Snowden's story out publicly. Okay, yeah. So at the time, he was working for The Guardian over in the UK. He then left The Guardian in order to join The Intercept, which he actually helped co-found. And since that time in 2013, The Intercept has been doing some pretty useful journalism. We've reported on uh, their writings here in the past on Free Talk Live, and they're, you know, award-winning. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as it turns out, they're also very political, and Greenwald has now resigned and is publicly speaking about exactly why that's happened. So, really? Yeah. And and for anybody that cares about the state of journalism, then you're definitely going to want to hear this. I mean, it's probably not going to be anything that's too surprising, but it's confirmation of what it's really like to work in a highly politically biased newsroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is from Glenn Greenwald posting to a new website, which I have not seen prior to this, called Substack.com. S U B S T A C K. Greenwald. Mm. The uh, the it's got a subdomain, so it's Greenwald.substack.com. And uh, this is his. I don't know if it's fir- his first post here, but it may be. So it's called the My Resignation from the Intercept. The same trends of repression, censorship, and ideological homogeneity. 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 It's a tough. I don't know if you just said what you said. I'm going to hit dump just in case. Uh, The uh, the intercept here. Anyway, homogeneity. Homogeneity. (laughs) It's a tough one. Wow. I I can usually say that word. It's not coming to me. Plagued the national press, generally have engulfed the media outlet I co-founded, culminating in censorship of my own articles. Hmm. Can you imagine how frustrating that's got to be to have the website, the company that you created, turn against you Mm. like this? He says, today I sent my intention to resign from The Intercept, the news outlet I co-founded in 2013 with Jeremy Scahill and Laura Poitras, as well as from its parent company, First Look Media. The final precipitating cause is that The Intercept's editors, in violation of my contractual right of editorial freedom, so he had an agreement with these people, Mm -hmm. censored an article I wrote this week, refusing to publish it unless I remove all sections critical of Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden. 
Wow. The candidate who is vehemently supported by all of the New York-based Intercept editors involved in this effort at suppression. Well, how can you criticize Joe Biden? He is he is the greatest senile child molester who has ever <laughs> run for president. Yeah. Uh, the censored article, based on re- recently revealed emails and witness testimony, raised critical questions about Biden's conduct. Not content to simply prevent publication of this article at the media outlet I co-founded, these Intercept editors also demanded that I refrain from exercising a separate contractual right to publish this article with any other publication. So they intercepted him on the way to the market. Well, they were trying to. They he's, were. He's going to do it anyway obviously, mm-hmm. uh, as he will say here later. So I've not actually seen that article yet. This is just his article prefacing uh, the, the actual news piece about Joe Biden. Now he's he himself has become news. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Greenwald. Gre- Glenn Greenwald did not kill himself. I had no objection, he says, to their disagreement with my views of what this Biden evidence shows. As a last-ditch attempt to avoid being censored, I encourage them to air their disagreements with me. By writing their own articles. Yes. That, you know, like, wait, wait, uh, newspapers used to do this. Magazines used to do this. Point, counterpoint. They'd yeah. have different opinions alongside one another and let their readers make the determination. Yeah, it's not good enough for, for leftists to, to speak out against you, though. They have to silence you. And that's what he's been um, experiencing. He So he said, write your own articles, critique my perspectives, let readers decide who's right. The way any confident and healthy media outlet would. But modern media outlets do not air dissent. They quash it. So censorship of my article rather than engagement with it was the path these Biden-supporting editors chose. The censored article will be published on this page. Again, his new website is greenwall.substack.com. Shortly, he says. Uh, and it looks like it looks like he has indeed now published that, that article. Uh, he says, my letter of intent to resign, which I sent this morning to First Look Media's Michael Bloom, uh, President Michael Bloom, is published below. As of now, I'll be publishing my journalism here on Substack, where numerous other journalists, including my good friend, the great intrepid reporter Matt Tybee, have come in order to practice journalism free of the increasingly repressive climate that is engulfing national mainstream media outlets across the country. He says, this was not an easy choice. I'm voluntarily sacrificing the support of a large institution and guaranteed salary in exchange for nothing other than a belief that there are enough people who believe in the virtues of independent journalism and the need for free discourse who will be willing to support my work by subscribing. Hmm. So this is probably something you're going to see more of. More Hmm. journalists who hopefully are like real journalists who don't want to have their words suppressed by the publications that they work for Hmm. stepping out and taking this this risk because it is you know a scary thing to leave the corporate fold right mm-hmm. if you've never done your own thing before to be able to get out there and and do your thing with no restrictions but also no guarantees mm. that that's kind of a it's a it's a scary cliff to walk off of you know sounds like freedom it is it no is freedom. restrictions no guarantees Yep, and he's willing to make that choice. As he points out, it was not easy. Uh, Like anyone with young children, a family, and numerous obligations, I do this with some trepidation, but also with the conviction that there is no other choice. I could not sleep at night knowing that I allowed any institution to censor what I want to say and believe. Less of all, a media outlet I co-founded with the explicit goal of ensuring this never happens to other journalists, Mm -hmm. let alone to me, let alone because I have written an article critical of a powerful Democratic politician vehemently supported by the editors of the imminent national, or rather, in the imminent national election. Wow. And there's uh, there's more to this, but, you know, kudos to him for having the courage to, to make this move and to come out publicly about this and it's just so sad and and so common for for Mm -hmm. individuals who have created a thing and then they turn this thing over to a board of directors and they completely lose control of of the thing that they created and it turns to the opposite Mm -hmm. of the creator's original intentions that's what's happened here and it didn't even take a decade yeah This, this website was founded in 2013 wow He says, but the pathologies, illiberalism, and repressive mentality that led to the bizarre spectacle of my being censored by my own media outlet 
are ones that are by no means unique to The Intercept. These are the viruses that have contaminated virtually every mainstream center-left political organization, academic institution, and newsroom. I began writing about politics 15 years ago with the goal of combating media propaganda and repression, and regardless of the risks involved, simply cannot accept any situation, no matter how secure or lucrative, that forces me to submit my journalism and right of free expression to its suffocating constraints and dogmatic diktats. If wow. you If you want to comment on this, maybe you're in journalism and you've had yeah, so some experience. Yeah. Are you in journalism? Well, kind of. This I'm isn't here. journalism. Isn't it? No, this is opinion. Um, but isn't all journalism opinion? These days it seems to have become that. But there was this sort of supposed day of journalism where the journalists held their opinion and gave multiple sides in their article, which it's hard to find those these days. Can you not have an opinion without being an idiot? More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Maxwell, he was a runaway into rescue, great disposition. About nine years ago, he was scratching a lot and he started losing some hair. My vet, she said, oh, he must be allergic to the chicken. Another vet said, it's the grain. Third vet, she said, it's the weather, something in the air. And then somebody said, D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. I have been listening to the Dynavite ads, hearing about different stories of different people, and it just clicked. I got my first 90-day supply, and it took a grand total of two weeks. And the dog stopped itching, the hair stopped falling out. Dynavite is nutrition. And Maxwell loves it. Now he's close to 10, and the Dynavite is a big part of Maxwell's diet. Dynavite for life. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. And he's a spectacular dog. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the value soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. News from news.bitcoin.com. The U.S. government moves to regulate cryptocurrencies after the Attorney General publishes enforcement framework. $4.8 billion still missing from the Silk Road. Some of the oldest Bitcoins were just moved. Is Satoshi Nakamoto back in the game? Publicly traded companies move more cash into Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com is your source for getting started with cryptocurrencies. Getting a wallet, buying Bitcoin cash, mining, and all the latest cryptocurrency news at news.bitcoin.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Some of you asked, and now we've delivered. LRN.FM's live Keen New Hampshire studio shows are now streamed in HD on Twitch. Visit our channel at twitch.lrn.fm and give it a follow. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription on Twitch. If you use it on our channel, Twitch will give LRN.FM a monthly piece of your Prime subscription cost. So please watch, follow, share, and subscribe to twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm.
Looking for a great real estate investment? Consider New Hampshire, which is ground zero for the Liberty Movement. Your first call should be to Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. He's more than just a real estate agent. He's your New Hampshire concierge. Where are the best places to live? Do you want farm, city, the burbs, or forest? Do you want a duplex or multifamily building so that renters pay your mortgage? There are homes in all price ranges in New Hampshire, and Mark can help with financing, too. Invest in Liberty and property. Mark Warden can help. PorcupineRealEstate.com You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. Bring up whatever you want right here. Our number, 855-450-FREE. Like Freedom. We're talking about the state of journalism, which is pretty dismal. You got uh, G- uh, Glenn Greenwald resigning publicly from the website he co-founded with the idea that it would be the website, The Intercept in this case, would be a safe place for journalists to publish without being censored. But turns out they were censoring his own articles. Oh, yeah. So it's Ian and nobody here in the studio tonight. We're actually going to go to your phone calls and thoughts here as well. But I do want to say thanks to the folks over at Intercoin. Ethereum smart contracts enable Intercoin to be traded against Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as a growing set of tokens pegged to your favorite fiat currency. Intercoin can be used to turn these into virtual versions of Bitcoin or U.S. dollars that have all the advanced features of Intercoin community currencies. They would finally be spendable in everyday payments, be programmable, instantly convertible, generate analytics, and more. When done, people can cash out back into the original versions. Think of Intercoin as a decentralized Layer 2 solution that isn't controlled by anyone. Intercoin is attempting to regain some of our freedoms that is uh, that are threatened on the internet and in meat space. We think that's important here on Free Talk Live. So important that FTL accepted $40,000 worth of Intercoin tokens from Intercoin Incorporated for advertising. If you think freedom is important too, check out Intercoin at intercoin.org. You can invest in this project and potentially make big gains or just be involved and perhaps shape its future. Intercoin.org. We go to your phone calls and thoughts. Larry in Indiana, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Larry. Larry, in Indiana. Larry going once. Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) Larry going twice. There may be some sort of difficulty over at our network, uh, so we'll put Larry back on hold and maybe we'll get back to. uh, We'll have the board up, check on the buttons, make sure everything is pressed in where it needs to be pressed in. Hello. And then we will try Larry back, unless he's in a bad, a bad cell. So let's continue here with Glenn Greenwald, who's who's taken that big step into the journey of doing your own thing in life and not mm. having to ask anybody's permission to publish. Uh, that's what he says he's been uh, that that he's doing now after he's resigned from his website that he created, mm. The Intercept, which has been around since 2013, shortly after uh, Glenn Greenwald made big headlines by releasing publicly the Edward Snowden files and information. Mm. Now, it sounds, from the name of this place, it's that he's... Uh, now broadcasting or writing from it Substack. sounds do they have a new business model or a unique business model how is that working i i have not looked at the actual main page for substack yet but i presume that his business model is going to be write stories and accept donations okay that, but I'll, that said though i don't see an obvious donate button on here at this point so there's a mm. subscribe button So you could follow, you can type in your email and you can subscribe and then presumably you'll get emailed updates Mm -hmm. whenever he publishes a new story. Uh, So you're following the person as directly as possible. I mean, presuming the Substack website doesn't blow him out the door or something like that. Um, Uh, Well, is it it a website? Is he using their technical infrastructure or is he using their own? Because it's when you say uh, uh, greenwald.substack.com, of course, there's an infinite number of places you can be at substack.com yeah. um so i just went to the site i wonder what so i just went to the site is. uh it says it is a place for independent writing start a newsletter build your community make money from subscriptions publishing is free with no limits we only make money when you do okay so this the site takes a cut right uh for the hosting and and you know i, I don't know what what the charge is here or or what but so in theory, they should, in general, be um, 
be uh, neutral so long as they're uh, mm. so long as somebody's reading you. That's at least their business right. inclination or, or incentivization. It sounds like. All right, so I, I've gone a little deeper here, nobody. And when you hit, when you type in your email and you hit subscribe, you're not actually subscribed immediately. You are then given a subscription plan, and you can choose fifty bucks a year. You can choose five dollars a month, or a founding member of one hundred and fifty dollars per year, mm-hmm. or you can choose none. And then you only get whatever public posts the person makes. Interesting. So that yeah. that is interesting. It it interests me because I would love to um, make my money delivering information one way mm-hmm. or the other. Um, but I've never found a way to make that work economically. Obviously, you have. Um, but it took years. It did. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, we worked for free for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so what I would recommend maybe nobody is to go to substack.com and see what their options are. Cause it could be that Greenwald a dollar a week. What the heck? Well, it, it could be that Greenwald is, uh, setting the rates. So it may not be that the site, has determined well, it that sounds it's, like it's the reader who's setting the rates because you can give, you know. Well, no, no. What I mean is uh, the reader gets to choose between the options, but I, I'm I'm guessing that Greenwald gets to set what the options are. So there's sure. an annual price, there's a monthly price, there's a founding member price, and, I mean, they're all arbitrary. So I'm guessing that the other journalists on this site, and there are several mm. of them, uh, have different different deals. That's interesting. So, so anyway, let's get back to it here. Larry is actually supposedly here now. Larry, are you with us? I'm back now. We have I you. appreciate your program, but uh, the model state emergency health as act on page 29, it goes into what you can be temporarily uh, quarantined or isolated for. And this is if they find that you've uh, been around somebody. They talk about the tracking, right? Mm-hmm. So they talk about the traffic and some uh, the the tracking, and if somebody gives your name, unbeknownst to you, that they've been around you, right? And they have have even uh, 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 they can give a written directive to quarantine you. And the language is are any group of individuals through a written directive for huh. for uh, uh, undetermined amount of time. Who are who, who may be transmission transmitting a contagious disease, but you know what this is like. And this is this just is because like, somebody. That's how the witch hunts worked too. Yeah, a witch hunt, yeah. And the, and this is just because somebody says your name because they've tested positive yeah. and they give your name, whether or not they've been around you or not. All of a sudden, you get mm-hmm. you get targeted. And now, when you lose your job and you're stigmatized mm-hmm. because they don't want you to come back to work because you've been around somebody that's tested. Uh, positive then this is where it starts they start picking out people who they know are behind on their bills the property taxes and they want what they got it's just like they've done during the salem witchcraft trial mm-hmm. they had people in the community who had property they wanted it and the forces to be just went out and finagled some way hey you're a witch we're burning you at the stake and we're going to divide your property that's what they're doing now it may be different terms, but that's exactly what they're doing. Our health director here in Indianapolis was on the radio, very unprofessional, going off. I mean, just pleading and crying. You got to stop going out. You're spreading disease and you don't even know it. She can't stop anybody from spreading any kind of disease. And she knows that. I'm trying to save your life. I mean, who is she? God or somebody? But is she no, I don't need your mother? protection. I don't need I'm not interested in it. That's what I said. No. I'm not interested in anything you have. You need, if you want to save yourself from COVID, stay in your own home. Yeah, I'd much rather have the risks that are associated with freedom. I'll take them. Thanks so much. Let the cowards stay home. Yeah, more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Thank you, Larry. It's Free Talk Live. Do you want more businesses accepting Bitcoin Cash and Dash? Now with AnyPay, you earn passive income for every purchase at those businesses. Finally, a financial incentive to spread Bitcoin Cash and Dash. You made it happen, so you get the rewards. Download the AnyPay Cash Register app and add your cryptocurrency wallet addresses. Then install it at a real-life business and tell us what you did at AnyPayInc.com. 
anypayinc.com. From New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestselling author Larry Correa comes the latest chapter in the epic military fantasy saga of The Forgotten Warrior. When the Grand Inquisitor perverts the law in his genocidal plot to kill every man, woman, and child in the untouchable cast, only the traitor, Ashok Vidal, and the sons of the Black Sword stand in his way. If it's war he wants, it is war he will get. Bane Books presents Destroyer of Worlds. Available September 1st wherever books are sold. Visit MonsterHunterNation.com for more. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, connect with others via the forum at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. LRN.FM's free-to-air satellite feeds blanket most of two continents. It was my goal to put our channel there so people without internet could receive our programs and feed pirate radio stations. As our contract with our satellite provider is coming up for another three-year renewal, I have to consider calling it quits. It's rare that we get feedback or support from our satellite users. We started a fundraiser a few years ago, and though there are a bunch of great contributors to it, as of this recording, it covers 15% of our monthly satellite costs. Please email lrn at lrn.fm and tell me how you use the satellite feed. Better yet, chip in at fund.lrn.fm. The costs aren't the issue. We can afford them, but why continue something not valued by the market? Want to help? You can join our satellite fundraiser for just $2 a month at fund.lrn.fm. If we raise enough to keep both channels on the air, awesome. If we raise more, I'll add more channels. If not, we can shut them down and go internet only. It's up to you. Thank you for your support. Fund.lrn.fm. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. is free talk live you can bring up what you want we're talking about journalism and the just absolutely embarrassing state of that world looking specifically at what glenn greenwald is having to say the story he's telling about himself in this case normally he reports on other people like edward snowden which is where he really made a a lot of press earlier in the last decade uh, around 2013 when that story came out he moved to his own website or what he thought was his own website, a site that he founded, he co-founded, with the idea of it allowing its journalists to express themselves and not be censored. See, this is why my church is not incorporated. Because if you incorporate, you have to have a board of directors, and Mm -hmm. the board of directors can betray you. Absolutely. And it's happened time and time and time again. And I've seen it happen. It's the nature of the corporate form. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the the nature of the corporate form is to obey the state, number one. 
Uh, all because, corporations are creatures of the state. The correct. state is literally the mother of all corporations. <laughs> right. Uh, then, of course, the state itself is a corporation. And it's the corporation with the license to kill. The corporation that answers only to itself. By the way, Freedoms Phoenix is a liberty-oriented news aggregation site. If you want the newest and freshest stories and perspectives on current events from those who value liberty, freedomsphoenix.com has them. Their daily dispatch is the best way to stay up to date on science, technology, historical findings, liberty news, government overspending, and the rise of the police state. It's freedoms with an S, phoenix.com, freedomsphoenix.com. So we're going to continue here with more from Glenn Greenwald. It's a lengthy piece. I'm, I'm going to skip a little bit of it and get back to uh, his crit- critique here. As again, he pointed out The Intercept, the website he just resigned from. He's now over on his own sort of page at uh, greenwald.substack.com. It allows people to subscribe directly to his posts, presumably without interference from the website uh, operator. So he says the current iteration of The Intercept is completely unrecognizable when compared to the original version or the original vision, he says. Rather than offering a venue for airing dissent, marginalized voices, and unheard perspectives, it is rapidly becoming just another media outlet with mandated ideological and partisan loyalties, a rigid and narrow range of permitted viewpoints ranging Mm -hmm. from establishment liberalism to soft leftism, but always anchored in ultimate support for the Democratic Party. A deep fear of offending hegemonic uh, cultural liberalism and center-left Twitter luminaries. Did he say demonic? Hegemonic. Hegemonic. And an overarching need to secure the approval and admiration of the very mainstream media outlets that we created The Intercept to oppose, critique, and subvert. As a result, it's a rare event indeed when a radical freelance voice, unwelcome in mainstream precincts, is published in The Intercept. Outside reporters or writers with no claim to mainstream acceptability, exactly the people we set out to amplify, have almost no chance of being published. In Soviet America, the system subverts you. (laughs) It's even rarer for The Intercept to publish content that would not fit very comfortably in at least a dozen or more center-left publications of similar size, which predated its founding from Mother Jones to Vox or even MSNBC. And by the way, Greenwald himself, from what I understand, he's not like a right winger or anything like that. Well, yeah, he's always struck me as, as yeah. left. No, he's a, like he's a gay guy, and he seemed to always have a lefty tinge to him. But because he's not towing the line, mm. he's out. Well, the line is getting the band. Let's say mm-hmm. is getting closer and closer to being a line every day. It seems the things that you're allowed to believe have been limited getting more and more limited Mm -hmm. every year if you think of how the hippie movement started uh it started with the students for a democratic society and you know what their big issue was Mm -mm. free speech at berkeley they were protesting in berkeley for free speech that's how the whole thing started and how the mighty have fallen Let's go. Uh, we'll continue with Glenn Greenwald in a moment here. But Richard is on the line in California. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Nobody. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, I'm just wondering what you guys think of uh, Dash right now. It's been at like $66. Uh, it's kind of at its low right now. It's been more or less around here for the last week or two. I don't know how you guys are feeling about Dash nowadays. I'm just curious. I think that it's that. more instructive to look at the price of cryptocurrencies in relation to the Bitcoin price. So if you actually compare Dash to the price of a Bitcoin, it has taken a huge fall over the last few years. It has gone from, I bought, you know, I remember it was 2017 when Bitcoin was first having its big run up. Uh, if people remember, toward the end of 2017, Bitcoin went up to its peak. It hit around 19,000 U.S. dollars per Bitcoin at that time. And at that same time, we saw Bitcoin doing the same thing as it's doing now, which is the fees on the Bitcoin network are shooting up. Mathematically, they have to on Bitcoin itself. Well, right, because they haven't fixed Bitcoin to make it so it can scale. But mm-hmm. uh, And they haven't changed it in three years. So the same thing is happening now. But what happened in 2017 was there was a big rush into what are called the altcoins. So competitors Mm -hmm. like Dash or Bitcoin Cash, uh, people started to move their money from Bitcoin into these alts, and it pushed those things up quite a bit. So I remember buying Dash when it was 5% 
of a Bitcoin. When one Dash was worth 5% of a Bitcoin, now it's worth 0.5%. So it's wow. gone down by a factor of 10 when you compare Bitcoin. So I've, been, I've taken a beating <laughs> on, uh-huh. uh, on Dash. But then again, I'm still holding the Dash I'm in mm. the hopes that maybe it'll it'll come back someday. But man, it just seems well, to be swirling down, down, down. See, I think it has to because at, at one time, nobody knew about any of these things. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, everybody knew about Bitcoin and nobody knew about every, anything else. Mm-hmm. And now, the, but as you find out about Bitcoin, sooner or later, you're going to be exposed to altcoins. And the, the reality is Bitcoin cannot scale enough to, uh, to be the only conduit for transmission of money. Um, but none of the other coins can scale enough to be the only conduit for the transition of money. So I believe that what's going to end up happening is that the sum of all Bitcoin, of all cryptocurrencies will expand enough to handle all traffic, Mm -hmm. um, because as long as more of them are needed, more of them will be created. But the question is, will Dash be one of those ones that can make a comeback? I mean, it has been in the in the top uh, ranked coins. Dash has been in the top ten. In fact, it has at one time been number, I believe, number five, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. So there was a time when Dash was riding high, and man, it's just been taking a beating compared to uh, to the Bitcoin price recently. I mean, ultimately, the model behind Dash is theoretically good to have a cryptocurrency that focuses on real life usage. I think is an important idea. But of course, as we've seen in real life, it's tremendously difficult to get people who even are into cryptocurrency to actually want to spend it. Now, Dash has had, uh, I would say... Which does not decrease its value. That shows that they place value on it. They want to hold on to it. And so spending spending cryptocurrency is, it's to to some extent, if you have other things that you can spend, Mm -hmm. it's it's almost taking a position contrary to what you actually believe to spend it. And that's why. Well, no, not really. I mean, you have to you have to understand that spending it is why it's worth something, right? Like because it's useful. If it weren't useful at spending, then it wouldn't mm. be something people would want to hold on to. But then again, it's it's weird. It's like a catch twenty two. What do you think, Richard? Uh, well, I know you guys have uh, used it in New Hampshire quite sure. a bit. Sure, I, I used it just the other day. You guys are still. St- oh, cool. I paid my yeah, roommate uh, twenty bucks in Dash today. I don't know. I'm. I just have. Uh, I have some dash. So I mean, I'm hoping that it goes up to a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> seems. Well, I mean, that seems optimistic. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin no, itself just, isn't anywhere near a million dollars. You know but there was a time in 2017 <laughs> when Dash peaked out at around a thousand dollars per dash. Uh, but again, looking at it in the price of Bitcoin is, I think, more useful than looking at it at the dollar price, because right now it's a tenth of what it was, uh, you know, three years ago compared uh, to Bitcoin. What's the dollar though? compared to what it was three years ago that's a good really? question yeah that's a tough one to measure but it's certainly mm. not it's certainly not it's like gone fish up in trying value. to measure water yeah it's certainly not gone up in value richard thanks for the call tonight i appreciate hearing from you 855 450 free like freedom free talk live are you afraid to go to the mailbox because of letter after letter from the irs are they stacking on more and more penalties and interest by now you know the problem won't go away on its own don't let the irs chase you to your grave with penalties and interest and liens and levies you need real help now. I'm Dan Pilla. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I help thousands of people solve tax problems they thought couldn't be solved. I can help you too. Call 834 No Tax or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com. Danpilla.com. Do you have health or energy challenges? Would you like to support your health and energy from a product that people consistently feel the uplifting and health building effects from the first day they consume it? I introduce you to Green Meadow Way the only whey protein powder from grass pastured cows that is processed in a manner that ensures that the proteins and amino acids remain in their correct geometric shape that the body can use. The naturally occurring proteins, peptides, and amino acids in Renatured Way are proven to support multiple aspects of human health, from complementing your immune system, to neutralizing chronic inflammation, to supporting detoxification, to stabilization of blood sugar, and more. 
Additionally, due to the Tesla-like frequencies encoded into Green Meadow Way, it is a dramatic support for your energy and mood. And it is an excellent emergency preparedness food with well over a five-year shelf life. To order, call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit GreenMeadowWay.com. GreenMeadowWay.com. What if you could cut your heating bills this winter with your existing wood-burning fireplace and not spend thousands doing it? You can with Great Wall of Fire Fireplace Grates. Our U.S. patented, made-in-America Wall of Fire Grates increase fireplace efficiency, eliminate fireplace smoke problems, and come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. See our grates in action and get free shipping from walloffire.com or call 800-274-7364. Fireplace heat without fireplace smoke. Walloffire.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com to receive our usually weekly news updates by email. Plus, we have a Twitter account at twitter.freetalklive.com, and you can follow us on the decentralized Mastodon platform at toot.freetalklive.com. So please follow us at toot.freetalklive.com and sign up for our emails at news.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live, inviting you to join us here if you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. Uh, you can also call in through our Matrix chat server. Just join the chat server if you haven't yet. You can get the instructions on how to do that at chat.lrn.fm. Chat.lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. We're going to continue with more on Glenn Greenwald's resignation from The Intercept and the story that he's telling about the abject failure of the website that he co-founded to protect journalistic integrity and to not censor its writers, turns out they were trying to censor Glenn Greenwald himself, who was one of the founders of the site. We'll uh, tell you more about that. But our last caller brought up an interesting question, nobody, and I think it deserves a little further uh, discussion because there's actually something I, that I had in the news, some cryptocurrency related news here, including that unconfirmed transactions on the Bitcoin network are at their highest level since 2017. Hmm. So what does that mean to say that unconfirmed transactions are at their highest level? Uh, it means that there's a big pile of uh, transactions in a thing we call the mempool, mm -hmm. and that there are there is an uns insufficient amount of processing power or or will or something. To get them all, really, it's the processing power in the brains of the developers, well, which was 
yeah, which was fell short and it fell short three years ago and it's never caught up. Right. The processing power on the Bitcoin network is immense. There's a ton of miners out there with a lot of computing power that are just slamming at this uh, you know, blockchain and verifying transactions and keeping it secure. But mm. the problem is the programmers have kept this like completely arbitrary limit on the size of what they call the blocks. And these mm -hmm. are the, the data that is going into the blockchain roughly every 10 minutes. One of these blocks is, uh, is found by the miners, and then it's ma mined onto uh, the blockchain. And that makes those transactions that have been waiting in the mempool that you described permanent. They're now mm -hmm. on the, uh, the blockchain. They can never be reversed uh, at that point. And so it seems like the best known name in anything is doomed to be crap, crap. you know, yeah. and it, it, that seems to be because, you know, no matter no matter what it is eventually it it sells out mm -hmm. when the when the Bitcoin name became that big and it was worth an infinite amount of money. Mm. Well, what happened? You came up with a bunch of people who moved onto that blockchain, invested a vast amount of money in it, mm -hmm. and it started making bad technical decisions. Clearly bad technical decisions. Technical decisions so bad that they appear to have been an attempt to kill the coin. And that's something that has been happening to technical projects for a long time. Mm -hmm. We call it embrace, extend, and destroy. Um, and uh, that's been done to a lot. So I think what happened is that the people who owned uh, Bitcoin, knowingly or unknowingly, sold out to the same people who run the dollar, and those people have been doing their best to sabotage it. I think that that's a completely legitimate theory, and I think it's actually backed up by some evidence. Well, so, it, what else would they do? They're not going right. to go softly into that no, great they're knife. Gonna fight. They're going to buy it, try to buy it off yep. like everything else, but you can't buy off an idea right. because people will abandon ship and go elsewhere. Well, that's the good news here is that Bitcoin it was a and is an open source project. So when Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator, we still don't know who that person or persons is, but when Satoshi Nakamoto released this code to the world, it could be copied by anybody who had the the wherewithal and the programming uh, chops to copy and and recompile and and release this other thing. And so we've seen thousands mm. of competitors spring up. But you're right, the programmers it's haven't been... fixed an obvious bug that mm -hmm. has been sitting there and plaguing their blockchain for years. And it's called the block size. And this is what caused the Bitcoin Cash mm -hmm. schism back in 2017 when Bitcoin had its first uh, split or schism mm -hmm. for the first time ever. It split into two different competing blockchains, one called Bitcoin Cash, the other called Bitcoin. And at that time, Bitcoin Cash, I think, raised its block size from one to eight megabytes and cents has raised it, I believe, to 32, if I recall uh, mm. correctly. Bitcoin SV went even further to like a gigabyte or whatever. But one megabyte is nowhere near enough uh, for all of these transactions. So as a result, there's a huge backlog of transactions. And because and of that, sorry, no, because ahead. of that, uh, over the last few days, the prices of the transactions has been going absolutely insane. I mean, I thought it was bad at two dollars per transaction. Just today, I paid just under nine dollars for wow. a Bitcoin transaction, and that wasn't even yeah. in the next block. I said you can get into the second block. So I, if I'd have gone for the first block, it probably would have been like thirteen bucks. Oh, you see, that's the thing. That is not survivable and no. the thing is they say it's going to be a store of value that's not how any of this works you can't be a store of value if you don't have value to store and guess what bitcoin isn't worth bitcoin isn't worth one one thousandth or uh one bitcoin is not worth a thousand transactions you know mm -hmm. and in the end, what you're going to pay for with Bitcoin is the transaction fees on Bitcoin itself. That's the thing that all Bitcoin will be used for again and again and again. And it can't be worth 
more than that. A thing cannot be more valuable than itself. Mm -hmm. um, and so the reality is, and yet we have seen this insistence in the media. They say Bitcoin now, but they don't say anything else. They never talk about altcoins. They don't want to talk no. about altcoins because the thing Those about altcoin is uh, altcoins is there is uh, theoretically an infinite number of them. That's and right. so they can't buy and destroy them all. And as soon as there stops being a Bitcoin, uh, as soon as. Uh, as soon as Bitcoin dominance ceases to be a thing and what we see is just a sea of altcoin, we're going to see um, a collapse in the price of Bitcoin. Um, well, and that's one of the things that happened. You mentioned Bitcoin dominance back in January of or not January, but in the, uh, the year 2017, we saw the Bitcoin dominance fall from as high as 85 percent, meaning that the that Bitcoin, mm -hmm. its market cap was 85 percent of the total market cap of all sort of recognized cryptocurrencies at that time. It fell from that high to as low as looks like about 32 percent. So there was a tremendous rush from Bitcoin. Now taking, it's at like 60. Now right? it's at like okay. 64, 65 percent. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the only thing that Bitcoin has that any other cryptocurrency doesn't have... First mover advantage and network effect. A first mover advantage, network effect, and buzz. Mm -hmm. Media buzz. Yes, a lot of that. Well, where does media buzz come from? It comes from the same people that mm -hmm. Glenn G Greenwald Work is for. running away from. That's right. You know, so if JP Morgan wants in, then mm -hmm. and they you do should now. want out. Mm. That's a good point. That said, I'm still going to hold on for the ride when it comes to Bitcoin because it still could be a ways up before it, uh, it gets defeated. I'm going to hold on to uh, crypto, but what has, uh, I mean, for the last year, what have the altcoins been doing? You said it yourself. The Bitcoin dominance is falling. Not that means so much. I mean, just a little bit. It has fallen a little bit over the years. So at the beginning of this year, it was at about maybe 68% and today it is just above 61%. Tell so. me this, do you think 68% of the people who use crypto are going to pay for their morning coffee with a coin no. that charges them $15? No, I don't think there's a so future. So there's no room left in that block. Look, there's no I, room for growth. I agree with you. In it's that maxed blockchain. out. That's that's what the it's, news is. And that means that rationally it's market cap Correct. should have But the market isn't always out. rational in, initially, right? It takes time for people to figure exactly. out exactly and that's what i'm saying is over time yes. this is where the market is going yeah. and when you when when bitcoin costs enough bitcoin that you know you can only do a thousand transactions with a full coin and that's what it at, at 15 dollars in at a 15 dollar transaction fees and fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars per coin that means that yep. one coin is worth one thousand transactions how many bitcoin cash transactions can you do <laughs> for one bitcoin cash a ton of them <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's that's what it is this hold that is thought. a hold that thought. this is a currency that's backed hold by on. its own utility we gotta keep it we can keep this going but there's more coming up in hour two. This is Free Talk Live. Remember when you first heard about Bitcoin? How long did it take you to realize this little project would soon change the world? Do you kind of wish you had gotten involved sooner? Well, now is your chance to be part of the next revolution in money. Intercoin is working to finally make crypto go mainstream. It's designed to be scalable enough to support everyday payments and even elections without the state. Bitcoin was originally supposed to be a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, the way we would all pay one another without having to trust any third party. But instead, over time, it mostly became a store of value. That's because every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network must put all transactions into a block. And that block can only hold so much. If crypto is to become mainstream, for everyone to use it in everyday payments, we need a new architecture, one that's as secure as Bitcoin while being far more scalable. Check out intercoin.org to find out more, and maybe pick up some of those coins for yourself. 
the new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. The LRN.FM social media channels have been revamped. We've eliminated Facebook and focused on other platforms like Twitter and Mastodon, the decentralized alternative to Twitter. On our accounts, you'll find posts from multiple LRN.FM show hosts together in one place. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm or better yet, move to the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, T-O-O-T.lrn.fm. I think you'll like it. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Not calling for charges. I'm Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. The attorney for the family of Walter Wallace Jr., the black man shot and killed by police Monday in Philadelphia, says the family has looked at body cam footage of the shooting. Shaka Johnson says the family had called 911 requesting an ambulance because Wallace had a mental health issue. I have grave issues with a person who is in a mental health crisis. And yes, I understand he had a, a knife. I had a, I said he had a knife. And I think that that does not give you carte blanche to execute a man, quite frankly. He says the footage shows Wallace with the knife, of, with his mother chasing him in front of the officers, but he did not approach police. He and the family are questioning why officers did not have less lethal weapons on them. With Election Day next Tuesday, both candidates focusing their efforts on Florida, Democrat Joe Biden held a drive-in rally in Broward County, telling the crowd if given a second term, President Trump will work to dismantle the Affordable Care Act. Women will once again be able to be charged more for health care just because they're a woman. Donald Trump thinks health care is a privilege. I think it's a right of every American. President Trump was in Tampa saying the choice is clear. This election is a choice between the American dream and a socialist nightmare. The president was to hold a rally this evening in North Carolina, but it has been postponed to Monday due to bad weather. Walmart has removed guns and ammunition from its stores in the U.S. in what the Wall Street Journal is reporting, an effort to protect customers and employees as tensions rise across the country in the last days before the election. They will still sell guns upon request. A group of civil rights rights organizations asking Georgia's governor to extend early voting hours after Hurricane Zeta disrupted voting in the state yesterday. America is listening to Fox News. This holiday season, more people will be mailing stuff than ever before. Stamps.com brings the post office and now UPS shipping right to your computer so you can mail and ship anything from the convenience of your home or office. With Stamps.com, you can print postage on demand and save money with deep discounts you can't even get at the post office. Like five cents off every stamp, up to 40% off priority mail, and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Print official stamps and labels right from your computer for any letter, package, or class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail's ready, schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's a no-brainer. Don't spend a minute of this holiday season at the post office. Right now, listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale with no long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in FOX. Stamps.com. Enter FOX. Go right now to Stamps.com. Enter FOX. One of the men charged in a campaign finance case, along with an associate of Rudy Giuliani, has ple pleaded guilty to two charges. David Correa admitted in federal court in New York to defrauding investors and making false statements to the Federal Election Commission. Correa is a former business partner of Lev Parnas, who was an associate of Rudy Giuliani. Correa and Parnas were charged with campaign finance fraud, but also of tricking investors into giving them $2 million for a venture that promised to protect people from fraud. They're accused of spending the money on personal and luxury expenses, but also of making political contributions to U.S. candidates for federal and state office in hopes of buying their influence, including on behalf of a Russian businessman and a Ukrainian government official. 
Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. A major airline using coronavirus tests as an incentive to get people to fly. United Airlines will give you a free COVID-19 test if you take a flight to London requiring it. Starting next week on flights three days a week, you'll be given the test. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-5012. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. (laughs) If you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books. With subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows, kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. It came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold, so many bestsellers out there. I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You bring up whatever you want here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We started out talking about the integrity or the lack thereof of the journalism business and now ended up talking, because there's more to say about that, but then somebody called in about Dash, as a, the, which is a cryptocurrency, led to a larger conversation about the integrity or lack thereof in uh, in Bitcoin and the programmers there that mm-hmm. have absol- ab- uh, absolutely failed to keep their coin up with the times and up with demand, and as a result of that, we're now seeing, according to, uh, I believe, Cointelegraph.com, the the highest level of unconfirmed transactions on the Bitcoin network since 2017. Now, to some extent, that does show that Bitcoin is getting more popular again, but mm-hmm. it's unfortunately not able to handle the, the transactions, which means fees are shooting up. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I spent o- over $9.00 today mm-hmm. to uh to i think it was or maybe it was close to nine dollars but uh, anyway i could have spent more but i didn't go with the fastest transaction time i went with the second fastest mm-hmm. and uh and if i'd done 25 blocks instead of two which would have taken you know 12 mm-hmm. times longer or could have taken 12 times longer it wouldn't have been that much cheaper it would have only been like seven or something like that but if you'd that. used bitcoin cash mm-hmm. it would have been uh what less than a penny if you'd it used probably maybe less um, than two cents or less than a penny yeah uh, yeah if if you'd used any Dash, other less than cryptocurrency a penny? is there anything i guess ethereum, ethereum is, is also the crazy. only other one yep. which is um, now they're trying to fix that, which there's, is that high. They're supposed to be coming out with an Ethereum 2.0, so maybe that'll solve their problem. I don't know enough about it. I can't speak to it. Um, yeah, but of course, there's no economic reason to buy Ethereum 2.0 until it exists. Sure. Being in Ethereum now doesn't give you a better position to get right. Ethereum 2.0 down the line. And that's the thing is, all of this will be commodified, you know? Uh, transactions will be commodified. And when it's commodities, you know, uh, when it's a commodity, when it's a real commodity, it is uh, it is undifferentiated. It is... Um, it is something it falls to its true value 
you know? Mm-hmm. And the uh, the true value of making a transaction isn't very, very high, you know? Nobody wants to send more than a dollar to send a hundred. So I just want to give you the numbers here, nobody, uh, in case you haven't heard them. According to Cointelegraph, the Bitcoin network has slowed down amid the new price highs, causing a large number of unconfirmed transactions. According to the mempool transaction count available at blockchain.com, they've been charting this for years, uh, the number of unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions surpassed 100,000 on October 27th. In fact, if you look at the chart, it actually peaked up to 140,000 within the last few days. This is the highest number of unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions recorded since late 2017 when Bitcoin hit $20,000. Now, of course, it's over $13,000, I believe, per Bitcoin today. Last time I checked, let's see, yeah, $13,420 roughly right now. Uh, The all-time high of unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions was recorded in early December of 2017, accounting for about 180,000 transactions, according to the data from blockchain.com. So it's just scraping that right now. But a lot of us, myself included, have stayed in Bitcoin up until this point Mm -hmm. because... Even though, in my case, I knew it was irrational, I've known it was irrational since 2016. Yeah, Yeah. the price of Bitcoin in terms of other cryptocurrencies is completely irrational. And I've now pulled, I've now pulled my uh, pulled Bitcoin down to 25 percent of my holdings. Interesting. Um, For the church, you mean? Uh, yes, yeah. and and I'm uh, and and uh, I've we've got faith in the market, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we're going to eventually divest all of our Bitcoin wow. uh, for other cryptocurrencies. So, um, well, what has what's if you look at the basket of other currencies, it is catching up with Bitcoin even now. The Bitcoin dominance has slowly been falling over the last year, and it it hasn't yet had that major gouging that it did in 2017 when it just fell off a cliff and a ton of the money from Bitcoin went into these alternatives like Dash and mm-hmm. and Bitcoin Cash and, and others. Uh, most, and a ton of money came back into dollars at that time also. I guess so. Um, um, that may be c- the know, case. But. The panic sellers went back into dollars, and a lot of yeah. the people were panic selling. But there then. were a lot of people who went into the alts. Oh, uh, yeah. Because they see the vision of cryptocurrency, and they understand yeah. that the alternatives are valid alternatives. There have always been mm-hmm. a bunch of people who've called the alternatives S coins, uh-huh. and we can't say that word on the air. But oh, well, that's uh, kind of funny when you're when you're backing a coin based on. It's got it's it's got what it has because of dominance with a corrupt media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the high number of unconfirmed transactions comes amid bit, uh, Bitcoin hitting new multi-month highs on October 27th. Bitcoin surpassed a thirteen thousand seven hundred forty-five dollar threshold, almost touching its previous peak recorded in 2019, which was 13970 So it's doing pretty well right now as far as its price is concerned. But at some point. People are going to go and spend Bitcoin. They're going to, if if they're not going to spend it on a cup of coffee, they're going to try to at least send it from one wallet to another, or send it from one uh, wallet to uh, like an exchange to try to sell it or whatever. And that's when they're going to get the sticker shock. That's when they're going to find out that this thing they've been sitting on and waiting on and have done nothing whatsoever with for however long they've had it is actually prohibitively expensive to move around, mm-hmm. and that is going to really burn a lot of people. Oh yeah. Because that means that the value it's supposed to be a store of is illusory. That's really, mm. we should really be publishing the right along with the dollar price of Bitcoin. We should be publishing the, um, the real value of Bitcoin. And that can be expressed as how many transactions can you do for, for one, one Bitcoin? Bitcoin. That's really interesting. It's the first time I've heard that tonight. It, I just came up with it today, but <laughs> right I on. think it's got some validity. Yeah. It, it's like when I tried to say it, I was I was trying when I said, I know what it's not worth. It's not worth, and then a bunch of verbal diarrhea. Mm-hmm. It, this is what I was trying to say, but right, I couldn't right. try and figure out. I couldn't figure out how to put it in words. Now I think I've got it. Mm-hmm. How many transactions can you do for a Bitcoin? How many transactions can you do? 
for a dash and then ask yourself why would you rather do a transaction with a bitcoin than with a dash and if people give any rational answer it's because uh well there's a lot more miners uh working on bitcoin so theoretically it's more secure well the problem with that is that miners come and are attracted by price and hackers are also attracted by price mm -hmm. okay so basically as the price of bitcoin falls against the other cryptos um the miners will inevitably go elsewhere and spread out right along with the value because they're self-interested traders. So the other thing about, you know, there's a lot of claims about security, and this is what the Bitcoin maximalists, the people who believe that Bitcoin is the one true coin and there will always be Bitcoin and it'll always be the top, which is Otherwise ridiculous. Otherwise known as retards. <laughs> uh, but they, they brag about the security of the network. But what they're not going to tell you is that there's a so-called feature that the Bitcoin programmers added several years ago called Replace by Fee. That actually, yeah. uh, that actually is a huge insecurity uh, that's built into the Bitcoin network that essentially means that if somebody flips this switch called Replace by Fee, it's just a little option uh, that you can set in your bit some, of the, some Bitcoin clients, not all of them allow it, but some of them do, that literally can allow you to cancel the transaction that you make if it's still sitting in the mempool. So as long as the transaction you've sent, it looks like you've sent a transaction. The receivers can see the transaction coming in. All right, they've paid for the item. I'll let them have the item. And then they can just press cancel transaction and then the transaction cancels. Dash doesn't have this problem. Bitcoin Cash doesn't have this problem. Like a ton of other cryptos. Yeah, and that don't. can happen up until the first confirmation. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, if I was writing a wallet... There would be a big a uh, red flag yeah. that said, he sent replaced by fee. Yep. Do you want to cancel? Yeah, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here. This is Free Talk Live. Maxwell, she was scratching and losing some hair. My vet, she says, oh, he must be allergic to chicken. Another vet said, eat the grain. Third vet said, it's the weather. Then somebody said, D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. It took two weeks and the dog stopped itching. The hair stopped falling out. The Dynavite is a big part of Maxwell's diet. You get some Dynavite, how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Freedom! Freedom is the call of the untamed Scotsman and all others that want to feel the wind under their kilts. At Free Talk Live, we love the breezy, swinging feeling that only a kilt from Sport Kilt can give. We teamed up with Sport Kilt to let you experience their form of freedom at a discount. Go to kilts.freetalklive.com and see a picture of Richie and me in our kilts. And then head over to sportkilt.com. Get some stylish freedom for yourself and use code FTL for a 10% discount. Sportkilt.com. What if the United States and the Soviet Union had fallen on land, sea, air, and the astral plane, struggled for dominion across parallel dimensions or on the surface of the moon. What wonders would have been unveiled? What terrors would have haunted mankind from those dark and dismal dimensions? Come closer, peer through a glass darkly, and discover the horrifying alternative visions of World War III from some of today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Weird World War III. Available now from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Having taken her father's throne, Sarah Calhoun has fallen out with one of her best allies, and her brother Nathaniel heads into Imperial Philadelphia with a reckless plan. Her uncle Thomas, armed with new powers and new allies, aims to remove Sarah from her throne and from the world of the living to survive and to gain the strength she needs to fight an impossible war. Sarah must unite the Mound Builder Kings to enact an ancient rite that will propel her beyond mortality. Servant Daughter by T.J. Butler is the newest entry in the Dragon Award-winning Witchy War series from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Free Talk Live. Rights are inherent because we're humans well, and they're a good idea that we respect among one another. Look, I mean, I believe in the I right agree. to I believe in your right to defend yourself. So if you want to, so you know, don't uh, you believe in the right as a country to, to defend no, our people, borders? Co collectives don't have rights. Only individuals have rights. It, no, we have right as a collective as a country. No, I don't think that you can grant oh, something certainly. to a collective 
that you don't have yourself. So you don't have the right to, like, put a gun to my head and take money from me, right? No, certainly not. Okay. Well, then you wouldn't have the ability to grant that to a collective. You wouldn't have you and 10 other people getting together wouldn't be able to create a collective right to put a gun to my head and take my money, would you? Then what do we have government for? I don't know, man. It's something we've been saddled <laughs> with for a long time, and I think it's about time that we end it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. There are lots of ways to listen to Free Talk Live. Our podcast has been around since podcasts began, and now the FTL feed is loaded with content besides our full show archives. Did you know that we make it easy for you to customize your podcast subscriptions? We have different feeds, one that includes only our full shows, one with just the Daily Digest, and our main feed that includes everything. You decide what you listen to. It's quick and easy to customize your feeds at feeds.freetalklive.com. That's feeds.freetalklive.com. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government control 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up at any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Yeah. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. We're talking about cryptocurrency at the moment. Bitcoin, uh, of course, back in the news with its not quite record highs, but getting closer with over 13000 almost nearing $14,000 over the last few days for one Bitcoin. It's resulted in a, um, an even further clogging of an already clogged network that the programmers just refuse to actually remedy. And so as a result, we've got tremendous backlogs on the Bitcoin network and constantly rising prices in fact the prices of fees average both average and median are right now at record highs for the last two years so they're not going to be higher than what happened in the end of 2017 yet but over the last two years it's uh, it's more than twice right now what they were at their peak over the last two years uh, so at the moment record or the uh, the average transaction fee I think yesterday or today is something around 11 over 11 US dollars worth of bitcoin per transaction and the median fee is close almost almost to $7. So I mean it's it's out of control. If you want to comment you can join us here at 855-450 free. Now, it's still something that, you know, is worth learning about and because bitcoin was and is revolutionary or even evolutionary as far as uh, the idea of money is concerned, you can go to Bitcoin.com. There's still a lot you know, that you, you should probably pick up on. There's a bit of a learning curve involved here, but they've got a really easy getting started section there that'll tell you about Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. You can go to Bitcoin.com to get started there. Again, that's Bitcoin.com. Plus, they've got a great news site, which will keep you up to date with the developments from around the planet in the world of cryptocurrency. So uh, if you want to join us, you can. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. There has been some other interesting news, and nobody had touched on this story earlier, where actually J.P. Morgan, the mega bank, one of the top, I think, three banks by like asset size and or branch locations, it's it's massive. Uh, there was they were in the news recently because well they're changing their tune when it comes to Bitcoin because as Fortune magazine points out here Jeff John Roberts reporting that for years J P Morgan was skeptical of Bitcoin now the bank's analysts say that its value could triple even challenging gold now of course it's already more expensive for one Bitcoin as compared to an ounce of gold but you know, both of those measurements are arbitrary. They say here a team of analysts at J.P. Morgan's Global Market Strategy Group are touting Bitcoin's emergence as an alternative to gold among millennials, suggesting a doubling or tripling in the price of the cryptocurrency if current trends continue. 
The prediction, which came in a research note published last week, is remarkable given the bank's one-time skepticism toward Bitcoin, which included its CEO, Jamie Dimon, calling it a fraud in 2017 and saying he would fire anyone for trading it for being, quote, stupid. And from what I understand, this guy is still the CEO of uh, J.P. Morgan. So I wonder what he himself is saying, because again, he, this was their department, the Global Market Strategy Group, that is making this statement, not the CEO himself. But their bullish stance is driven in part by PayPal's recent decision to offer Bitcoin to its customers, which, by the way, as we discussed here on Free Talk Live, means that PayPal is actually not, from from what we understand, uh, they're they're going to be very limited in what they allow their customers to do with Bitcoin. Now, maybe that's going to change in the future and I hope that it does. Hopefully, there'll be enough demand from PayPal users who are into cryptocurrency to demand uh, that PayPal allow them to do one of the most basic things that you should be able to do with your cryptocurrencies, which is withdraw it from the site where you got it. So if you somebody sends you crypto on uh, via PayPal, presuming they even let you hold the balance in crypto and they don't automatically convert it to U.S. dollars, that you should be able to hit the withdraw button and take it out to your own wallet where you can have control over it. So supposedly that uh, initially PayPal is not going to be allowing that and they don't have any plans to change that, but uh, we'll you know keep you up to date as that situation develops. So uh, they are saying that that was part of what drove JP Morgan's stance. And then also Square's recent move to add 50 million of the cryptocurrency to its balance sheet. It's also worth pointing out that Square, they started selling Bitcoin, sort of like PayPal is now adding Bitcoin. Square also added Bitcoin to its lineup in the Square Cash app. Uh, that was probably three, maybe even four years. It seems like at least three years ago at this point. Uh, Square doing that was a huge move in the right direction for Square. Ultimately, Square did allow people to withdraw, but you have to jump through uh, Know Your Customer hoops first. But Bitcoin revenues, the the money, the profit that they're making off of that, actually is dwarfing uh, their revenue from all of their other operations combined. So I think it was last year when they crossed that threshold from having Bitcoin be a smaller aspect of their business to becoming the largest aspect of their business. In profit, if not by volume. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it was, but it was a pretty big deal when that happened. Another major factor in J.P. Morgan's change in uh, change of heart is uh, the demographic trend in which younger generations are choosing Bitcoin over gold. Quote, the older cohorts, co- cohorts prefer gold, while the younger cohorts prefer Bitcoin as an alternative currency, says the research. I guess I'm a Gen Xer because I've got gold Both and crypto. Them. Right. Uh, me too. The analysts go on to observe that if this trend continues, there could be a challenge to gold in the long term with important price implications for Bitcoin. Quote, even a modest crowding out of gold as an alternative currency over the long term or longer term would imply dou- doubling or tripling of the Bitcoin price from here says the note. Uh, oh, but what they're missing there is what happens to the co- to the co- uh the price of gold when all of a sudden holding gold can be your way of backing a cryptocurrency. When we have widespread gold traded on the blockchain, it's going to have the best uh, the best aspects of gold and the best aspects of crypto mm-hmm. all rolled into one. And it and guess what it looks like when that happens? It's warehouse certificates for gold. Mm-hmm. We're back to the original 100% backed money. It's the, it becomes the opposite of the commodities market if... You have one thing, which is you are able to collect the value of your tokens in specie. Now, that is something that a lot of gold guys will ask the, when, when, you, when you start talking to them about what's cryptocurrency. What's it backed by? Is what's it backed by? Well, there are actually tokens on the crypto markets that are backed by gold. Uh, Pax Gold comes to mind. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. It is currently number 110, I believe, on the the list of rankings of most valuable uh, cryptocurrencies by market cap. So it's not in the top 100 yet. How do you collect the gold from Pax? What do you have to do? I don't know. 
I have not yeah. looked into See, that. See, that's what the, that's the problem is the Chicago Commodities Exchange is a lie. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is when I worked for Citibank, I used to I used to work uh, for Citibank writing the code that uh, that infa- that is the infrastructure for the market and I was trying to buy silver on the Chicago Commodities Change Exchange and get it delivered. I could not do it. Utter failure, and I mm. had plenty of money. All right, we'll continue here in moments. If you've ever redeemed one of these gold-backed tokens, you know what was the process like? You want to comment on it? You can join us. It's Free Talk Live. On a multidimensional probe, the Siskov Transtemporal Vehicle Clio discovers two entire universes have been annihilated in a massive time-traveling accident. Robert Kaminsky and his crew race home with the news, only to learn their own universe is next. To pull off the impossible, they'll have to embrace the unpalatable by placing their trust in the admin, Siskov Xenophobic Sister Universe, and the same people who tried to kill them all only months before. The Valkyrie Protocol by David Weber and Jacob Hollow. Available October 6th wherever books are sold. Visit bangbooks at bang.com for more. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the values soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. Is spreading the message of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace around the globe worth $2 per month to you? As you may already know, in addition to our internet feed, LRN.FM broadcasts on free-to-air satellite across North and Central America, as well as Sub-Saharan Africa, and we've been available on satellite for free 24-7 since 2010. The LRN.FM free-to-air satellite signal is reaching some of the most oppressive regimes in the world, and there's no doubt our ideas are making an impact. You can learn more about the channel's impact by watching the three-minute video at fund.lrn.fm. If you'd like to help free minds globally with our ideas of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace, you can donate as little as $2 per month via fund.lrn.fm. You can help us continue and expand our satellite broadcast to multiple continents. Visit fund.lrn.fm today, and thank you for your help. Don't forget to share the link on social media. That's fund.lrn.fm. Are you a cryptocurrency advocate? The Crypto Tip is the ideal outreach tool to help new people discover cryptocurrency. It's a printable business card size tip that you can give to service providers, preferably in addition to a good cash tip. When the server scans the QR code, it'll bring up an explanation of cryptocurrency, how to install a wallet, and allow them to claim the tip. If they don't claim the crypto, you get your tip refunded to you after a time period you specify. Plus, if they do claim the tip, you get an email alert. Create as many tips as you want at CryptoTip.org. That's CryptoTip.org. What if you want to hear the latest episode of Free Talk Live, but all you have is your phone, you forgot to download our archive, and you have no data connection? You can call our listen line at 641-793-0191. That's a long-distance number, so you may incur charges. If not, listen as long as you want. 641-793-0191. The Free Talk Live listen line, 641-793-0191. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think Excuse you are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. Some of our live shows are streamed in HD on Twitch. Please follow and share at twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm. It's 
It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. That's 855-450-3733. By the way, in the studio with you tonight, it's Ian. And nobody. So, uh, you know, you were talking, nobody with me, about these uh, cryptocurrencies that are, like, actually backed by gold or, or silver. Mm-hmm. And it, of course, made me think, well, what else is out there? Um, what are, what are the, the top gold-backed cryptos right now? And I don't know if there's a list of just asset-backed cryptos out there, because, you know, normally when you see a list of cryptos, it's just got everything. Um, so it's kind of hard to figure out which ones are which, but I'm just looking through the top 100 here and just searching for the word gold in uh, on coingecko.com. It looks like Tether Gold, it may be the top one at uh, number 96 on the charts. Wow. So Tether, which is has historically been a very popular dollar-backed uh, so-called stable coin. Currently, actually, I think Tether is, what, number three on the... the planet yeah uh tether the dollar backed tether is the number three crypto with a market cap of 16.5 billion dollars which has been shooting up over the last year or two mm-hmm. so they they and launched its value their- is mostly in its ability to get you in and out of crypto right and uh so they launched their own gold backed crypto called tether gold x-a-u-t is the uh, the little call sign for it and it's currently, as I said, at number 96 with about a 90.5 million uh, market cap. And then after that, then there's Pax Gold, which is at about 110. So none of these are you know, blowing away the marketplace yet, but they're also mm-hmm. worth talking about. I mean, they exist and supposedly they're backed. We were, you were asking out loud, how do, you, uh, re- how do you get the actual gold behind this? According to Paxos.com, which is the company behind Pax Gold, they say that you can redeem Pax Gold for LBMA accredited good delivery gold bullion bars. Now I don't know how much gold's in a bar. Is that like ten ounces or something? Or tw- oh, well, you can make a gold bar of any size. There yeah. are ten ounce bars. There are kilogram ounce. bars. There are all kinds of bars. But he said it says here for additional convenience, smaller amounts can be redeemed through a network of physical gold retailers in U.S. and Canada, which is interesting mm-hmm. because that sounds a lot like an idea you came up with once upon a time, nobody, to have a oh, network yeah. of of coin shops that could redeem a gold-backed crypto. Uh, yeah, because that way you can get in and out of crypto for one thing without having to go through dollars. And that means quite possibly without having to go through KYC. Even Komodo has sold, sold out on mm-hmm. KYC. They're they're becoming a KYC... Uh, KYC th- stands for Know Your Customer. Uh, yeah, it, it, it means they spy on you for the government. Okay, they're working for the government now, just like the banks work for the government, or perhaps it's more proper to say the government works for the banks, Mm -hmm. and just like the exchanges work for the government, now the decentralized exchanges are starting to work for the government. The thing is, you can start up a decentralized exchange on a shoestring just by jacking the code from an existing decentralized exchange. Assuming it's an open source decentralized exchange. Uh, well, if it's not, why are you bothering? Because yeah. it's uh, if it's not open source, it's it's. D- I, it's How do you nothing. know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so actually, I'm hoping to hear news about a uh, what could be a very exciting decentralized exchange. A friend of the show, uh, Duke, who is one of the programmers behind Hush, which is a uh, one of the very few cryptocurrencies that's focused on true privacy out mm. there. Obviously, you got Monero, but uh, Hush is is I think an up and comer. At least that's my opinion about it. I'm not by no means an investment advisor. It's actually pretty hard to get a hold of. Uh, your easiest easiest way yeah. to get Hush is to actually mine it uh, at this point, mm. but. Well, or have a real decentralized exchange. Well, that was what I was going to say. Is so the the Komodo people had a decentralized exchange that you and I kind of played with a little bit called Atomic Dex. Mm-hmm. They renamed it to Atomic DeFi because there's this whole decentralized finance DeFi thing that's sort of a buzzword right now. So they renamed that. Was that when they sold out? That they it might have been around it? that. It might have been around that time. But apparently, what happened recently was 
the people behind Atomic Dex, which is a decentralized exchange, started to talk about how they were going to uh, or they were going to put in anti money laundering features, so called features, mm -hmm. restrictions, I should say, mandated by governments into this decentralized exchange. And so Duke from uh, from Hush has been publicizing what they're doing behind the scenes, and they're mm -hmm. obviously not happy about it. So now they're attacking Hush. Uh, and so what Hush is going to do is they're going to fork the code behind Atomic Dex and launch Hush Dex, which will be a truly decentralized exchange that will not be doing anti-money laundering, know your customer, are all these arbitrary government requirements to try to appease government masters. So I'm very interested to see how this particular project comes along. Uh, yeah, I, I am too, because, you know, basically what all these currency controls boil down to is they want to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways they do that is by not letting you trade. That's why you have to be an accredited investor to buy into a new uh, project. You have to prove that you're already rich mm. before you can legally invest in a startup. That's, That's crazy. literally the law. You have to prove yep. that you're rich first. And if you're not rich, you don't get to play Go right. Pound Sand. You're out of the club. It's so, a great big club. Yep. You're not part of it, and you never will be. But Bitcoin seems to be part of it now. Let's go sadly. to the phones. We got Scrambling on the line in Seattle watching us on Twitch. Go ahead, Scrambling. Hey, Ian and nobody. How hey, are you guys? What's on your mind tonight? Hey. Oh, just calling to shoot the shit. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so sorry. You just can't say that on the radio. And he sounded like he was sorry about it. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, you can't say that on yeah. the radio. I, I think he was a sincere caller. Yep. He, uh, that's uh, so sad. Yeah. I'm the one guy who gets a mulligan on that. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're in the studio, you get a mulligan. Yeah, you, ten you tend to. <laughs> Uh, I apologize. I wish I wish we could have put you on the air. It sounded like you had something that you wanted to talk about, but and he is saying he's sorry in our our Twitch chat room. So our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. You're welcome to maybe put your topic in the chat room, scrambling four twenty, because we do only allow one call per night. Uh, but if you want to drop your topic in the chat, we'll see if we can still address whatever it was mm. uh, that you want to say. Normally, normally chat rooms, you know, are, are, they're hard to pay attention to during a show, uh, but we do try to keep an eye on it during the breaks. Mm -hmm. And so we we do we do watch what you guys are saying there. So uh, a fifty five four fifty free. If you've ever gotten one of these gold backed or silver backed cryptocurrencies to work, meaning that uh, you've you've actually gotten the the backing from it. Can you tell us about how that went? I actually did uh, one of them once. I, d I did too. I Which bought, one did you do? Um, I bought 25 grams mm -hmm. of uh, any pay gold, mm -hmm. and I took them out to Portsmouth one day. With I went out there with you and Aria, and we stopped by the any pay headquarters, and I traded those 25 uh, grams of crypto for 25 grams of uh, of uh, of maples. Uh, they're pretty little uh, things. Yeah, too. they were little one gram gold maple leaves from Canada. Yes. Yep. And that's uh, Canada, I believe, is point nine 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 nine. Fine, if I recall correctly, right? Uh, yes, they are. Although once yep. you've got three nines, the fourth one barely matters. <laughs> but the other ones don't, right? Like the, a yeah. lot of the I other. I mean, the fourth pieces. nine is worth a dollar, I think. Sure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, if you if you want to comment, you can. In my case, I used the uh, silver backed, the LD two, the Liberty Dollar two that had come out that still I think exists. It just mm. never really kind of went anywhere. They they did an initial fundraising drive and they actually advertised with Free Talk Live. So they paid us in this token. And just to just to put it to the test, I went ahead and, and collected I think ten of them. So nice. I, I had eleven of them. So I only I still have one left that's in token form and I got the, the other ten in ounces of silver. Nice. So they fulfilled it. I'm I really want to start uh, start my own one of those. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. Let's get back into the dismal state of journalism. We still have that to, to uh, discuss. You can also bring up whatever's on your mind here. This is Free Talk Live.
If you or a loved one is a survivor of abuse by Boy Scouts of America representatives as far back as the 1970s, we urge you to speak up. We'll stand with you and get you the help and financial compensation you deserve. A jury in Portland, for example, awarded $18.5 million in punitive damages in one Boy Scout sexual abuse case. The Boy Scouts of America filed for bankruptcy, and funds have been set aside to compensate those injured. Time is limited, and so are the funds. Call today. Don't wait. For free information on how to file your claim, call All Survivors Advocates right now. We have a long track record in helping our clients get the legal justice and compensation they deserve. Please, we are ready to help you. Call today. 800-364-2984. 800-364-2984. 800-364-2984. That's 800-364-2984. Attention business owners body slammed by overwhelming debt. If your business is in trouble, hassled by creditors, if you're frustrated, finally fed up with big business bailouts while your business has been left for dead, please listen close. There's a brand new fast track bankruptcy. Some have even called it the biggest small business bailout in American history designed for individuals and their businesses and look almost no one knows about this yet my attorney wasn't even aware of it the truth is beating the system has never been easy because it's rigged in a sense against the little guy but here's the jaw-dropping news nobody's talking about they've literally just changed the system so that you can beat it but only if you understand how the new game has to be played find out if you qualify at pocketsoflight.com This government-backed small business repair program is still legal, but may not be renewed after the election. Fight back fairly. Fight back ethically at pocketsoflight.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you amp Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the amp-only Facebook group and amp podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. Some of you asked, and now we've delivered. LRN.FM's live Keene, New Hampshire studio shows are now streamed in HD on Twitch. Visit our channel at twitch.lrn.fm and give it a follow. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription on Twitch. If you use it on our channel, Twitch will give LRN.FM a monthly piece of your Prime subscription cost. So please watch, follow, share, and subscribe to twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm. Look, I'm sorry, but you're in for a world of pain if you use Koinomi. The reason is their wallet doesn't support payments. The solution is simple. Let them hear your voice. Message Koinomi on Twitter. It takes five seconds and tell them any pay sent you because they're on the fence right now. And your voice will prove that people care about using Bitcoin for payments. Go tweet at Koinomi now or even better, leave a review in the app store. They really pay attention there. Thanks. Love what we do? Please help support our international satellite channels at patreon.lrn.fm. That's patreon.lrn.fm. Back with more Free Talk Live. We've got open phones, as always, here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Like freedom, that's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian, and nobody. Uh, we've been talking about cryptocurrency. We started by talking about the uh, the just the dismal state of journalism out there, and we're going to come back to that because Glenn Greenwald had a little bit more to say about why he quit at the very website that he helped co-found back in 2013, The Intercept, because they were trying to censor his own articles as one of the founders 
of the site. So and then that then somehow we got or somebody called in about cryptocurrency and that led into a long rant uh, between the two of us about uh, the state of Bitcoin and how the dismal state of Bitcoin. Uh, that yeah. is to say, Bitcoin BTC, not not Bitcoin is like a generic term. I think there's a bright future in cryptocurrency in general. I just mm. don't know if there's much of a bright future in Bitcoin BTC itself, the original. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. The uh, the handwriting seems to be on the wall for that one. I mean, it had a great run. You know, a lot of people made a lot of money, but I think a lot of people are going to lose money during the second crypto rush. So, um, just to give you a little bit of information, since we we're talking about gold backed cryptocurrencies, I did a little more digging into Pax G, which is a one ounce of gold backed cryptocurrency token mm -hmm. and we were wondering about well what, you know what does it take to actually redeem one of these things if you have one of these tokens how do you turn it into a gold bar uh -huh. and there's a website that they mention over at paxos.com called alpha bullion where they will sell you actual gold bars but there's an eight percent fee Woof. or an eight and a half percent fee so you don't get to just trade one pax g and get one gold bar because obviously somebody's got to make some money on the process right like you know there's mm. somebody who has to put that uh ounce of gold into a you know an envelope and and ship it to you but they're charging a full eight and a half percent so you actually have to pay 1.085 pax g in order to get the gold bar delivered from this particular company wow so you're looking at about two thousand Two thousand twenty-five dollars uh, is your final price right now to get that ounce of gold, and and you generally have to pay several percent to get into crypto too. Sure. So that, in terms of going from dollars to to gold, that's pretty inefficient. But uh, then well, but again, and you're not going to find. Uh, any ounce of gold at, at you know less than two thousand dollars right now anyway right like oh so the, yeah I mean that's that's true yeah. um, that's definite that's definitely true ounce um, price right now is uh, the spot price is eighteen hundred and sixty six bucks so the mm. the fact that you can get an ounce of gold for around two thousand dollars is actually pretty decent I think if you were to look around and look mm -hmm. at different uh, gold prices on gold dealer sites a lot of times they might be sold out. And right. if they're not sold out, you're probably looking at over two grand for that. Would be my guess. Yeah, you're probably maybe twenty one hundred right there. You know, um, I haven't I haven't looked in a little while, but earlier this year I did look, and it was like yeah. you couldn't get anywhere near. I mean, you never could get anywhere near spot price, but it's usually at least a couple hundred more than than spot for an ounce. Yeah, I mean the the day that will be a wonderful day is when so many people are trading in this that or in in uh in gold backed uh cryptocurrencies that a, a trustworthy one will be such that you can trade it back and forth with specie with any old guy on the street mm -hmm. oh yeah i got some gold with me yeah if it were yeah. that uh popular if it were that popular and if the companies running it were that uh trustworthy because basically in a stable coin you're uh your 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 price or the value of it is related to both the value of the underlying commodity and also to the probability of your actually being being able to receive that commodity when you want it so counterparty risk is the other side of mm -hmm. that um you you can minimize counterparty risk but you can never eliminate it so i want to get back into the intercept which is uh, where Glenn Greenwald has resigned from. He founded this website back in 2013, The Intercept, with a few other journalists for the purpose of creating a place where they could publish their stories without inter uh, editorial interference, without somebody, uh, some muckety-muck or higher-up saying they, they shan't be allowed to publish that opinion, or you have to keep your opinions to this restricted range. And sadly, mm -hmm. the website that he founded has turned against him and was attempting to censor his stories. So he's actually published the full story. Well, it's mostly turned against reality. Sure. <laughs> uh, and he had to walk away as a result of that. And now he has uh, he's on his, I'm not going to say it's his own website, but he has another site now called Substack.com. So he's not the owner of this site. He's just sort of blogging at this, this website. He's posting there and you could subscribe to his post 
directly. Now, obviously, Substack is taking a cut. I'm not sure what the cut is, but they're taking some piece of that of the action for themselves. But whatever portion of uh, some portion, obviously a, a portion that Glenn, Gre Glenn Greenwald thinks is acceptable, is going to him. So you can actually now directly subscribe or, or as directly as you ever could subscribe to Glenn Greenwald. So he's talking about his experience here in a post explaining why he resigned from The Intercept. And he says that courage is required to step out of line, to question and poke at those pieties most sacred in one's own milieu. But fear of alienating the guardians of liberal orthodoxy, especially on Twitter, is the predominant attribute of The Intercept's New York-based editorial leadership team. As a result, The Intercept has all but abandoned its core mission of challenging and poking at, rather than appeasing and comforting, the institutions and guardians most powerful in its cultural and political circles. Making all of this worse, The Intercept, while gradually excluding the co-founders from any role in its editorial mission or direction, and making one choice after the next, to which I vocally objected as a betrayal of our core mission, continued publicly to trade on my name in order to raise funds for journalism that it knew I didn't support. It pur purposely allowed the perception to fester that I was the person responsible for its journalistic mistakes in order to ensure that blame for those mistakes was heaped on me rather than the editors who were consolidating control and were responsible for them. The mm. most egregious but by no means only example of exploiting my name to evade responsibility was the reality winner debacle. As the New York Times recently reported, that was a story in which I had no involvement whatsoever. While based in Brazil, I was never asked to work on the documents which Winner sent to our New York newsroom with no request that any specific journalist work on them. I didn't even learn of the existence of that document until very shortly prior to its publication. The person what who, was the reality winner situation? I have situation? no idea. I've heard it's somebody's name. It's a bizarre name, but I don't know what happened with For the this purposes, person. it's irrelevant. He's just giving it as an example of how they used him. Uh, he says the person who oversaw, edited, and controlled that story was Betsy Reed, which was how it should have been given uh, the magnitude and complexity of that reporting and her position as uh, editor-in-chief. It was Intercept editors who pressured the story's reporters to quickly send those documents for authentication to the government because they were eager to prove to the mainstream media outlets and prominent liberals that the Intercept was willing to get on board the Russiagate train. They wanted to counteract the perception created by my articles expressing skepticism about the central claims of that scandal that the Intercept had stepped out of line on a story of high importance to U.S. liberalism and the left. That craving to secure the approval of the very mainstream media outlets we set out to counteract was the root cause for the speed and recklessness with which that document from Winner was handled. But The Intercept to this very day has refused to provide any public accounting of what happened in the reality Winner story to explain who the editors were who made the mistakes and why any of it happened. As the New York Apparently Times, they couldn't cope with the reality. As the New York Times article makes clear, that refusal persists to this very day, notwithstanding vocal demands from myself and the other founders of The Intercept, as an institution that demands transparency from others, has the obligation to provide it for itself. The reason for the silence and the cover-up is obvious. Accounting to the public about what happened with this situation would reveal who the actual editors are who are responsible for this deeply embarrassing newsroom failure, and that would negate their ability to continue to hide behind me and let the public continue to assume that I was the person at fault for a reporting process from which I was completely excluded from the start. That is just one example of illustrating the frustrating dilemma of having a newsroom exploit my name, work, and credibility when it's convenient to do so, while increasingly denying me any opportunity to influence its journalistic mission and editorial direction, all while pursuing an editorial mission completely anathema to what I believe. He said, despite all of this, I didn't want to leave The Intercept. As it deteriorated and abandoned its long or its original mission, I reasoned to myself, perhaps rationalized, that as long as The Intercept at least continued to provide me the resources to personally do the journalism I believe in and never to interfere in or in impede my editorial freedom, I could swallow everything else. But the brute censorship this week of my article about Hunter Biden's materials and Joe Biden's conduct regarding Ukraine and China, as well as my critique of the media's rank-closing attempt— to, in a deeply unholy union with Silicon Valley and the intelligence community to suppress its revelations, eroded the last justification I could cling to for staying. It meant that not only does this media outlet not provide the editorial freedom to other journalists, as I so hopefully envisioned several years ago, but now it no longer even provides it to me. 
The yeah. toll-free number. It's a sad story. Yeah, it is. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts with us. You can take control of the airwaves and bring up whatever's on your mind. This is Free Talk Live. Having taken her father's throne, Sarah Calhoun has fallen out with one of her best allies, and her brother Nathaniel heads into Imperial Philadelphia with a reckless plan. Her uncle Thomas, armed with new powers and new allies, aims to remove Sarah from her throne and from the world of the living. To survive and to gain the strength she needs to fight an impossible war, Sarah must unite the Mound Builder Kings to enact an ancient rite that will propel her beyond mortality. Servant Daughter by T.J. Butler is the newest entry in the Dragon Award-winning Witchy War series from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Did you know you can support freedom of speech just by visiting shop.freetalklive.com? You'll see links to Walmart, Love Java, New Egg, and more. Every day, Free Talk Live is at the forefront of the liberty movement as the biggest liberty-oriented talk show in the world, giving you a platform to be heard on any topic. Get listener-only specials without doing anything other than an extra click. Visit shop.freetalklive.com. Use the links and buy what you'd be buying anyway. Take action now. Save and support freedom. Visit shop.freetalklive.com. It's shop.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The fight for Florida. I'm Lee Silicera, Fox News. Five days until Election Day and both President Trump and former Vice President Biden spending time in the all-important state. The president in Tampa this afternoon were per- with personal attacks against his opponent. Sleepy Joe's a little bit off. Let's face it, Sleepy Joe is shot. And I'm not a fan of his, and he's not a nice guy. Just, you know, I feel better. If he was a nice guy, I couldn't say these things. He's not a nice guy. Now he doesn't remember whether or not he used to be a nice guy. Biden in Broward County, where he attacked the president for not believing in climate change. This guy doesn't understand much of anything. You've all seen the impact more than most. Devastating hurricanes that lay waste to whole communities. Economic toll is astounding. This evening, Biden is in Tampa. The top Democrat in Congress is confident in her party's chances on Tuesday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is thinking ahead, she says, to legislative priorities like coronavirus relief, expanding health care and infrastructure projects, and is confident Democrat Joe Biden will win on Tuesday. So while we don't want to be overconfident or assume anything, we have to be ready for how we are going to go down a different path. Negotiations on a comprehensive coronavirus-related stimulus package are stalled. Pelosi says an agreement could be made in a lame duck session between the election and January. Jared Halpern, Fox News. The family of Walter Wallace, the black man shot to death by police in Philadelphia Monday, says they don't want criminal charges brought against the officers, but attorney Shaka Johnson says... They were improperly trained and did not have the proper equipment by which to effectuate their job. They didn't have it. Johnson says the family called for an ambulance because Wallace was having a mental health issue. America is listening to Fox News. Um. This holiday season, more people will be mailing stuff than ever before. Stamps.com brings the post office and now UPS shipping right to your computer so you can mail and ship anything from the convenience of your home or office. With Stamps.com, You can print postage on demand and save money with deep discounts you can't even get at the post office. Like 5 cents off every stamp, up to 40% off priority mail, and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Print official stamps and labels right from your computer for any letter, package, or class of mail, anywhere you want to send. 
Once your mail's ready, schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's a no-brainer. Don't spend a minute of this holiday season at the post office. Right now, listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale with no long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in FOX. Stamps.com. Enter FOX. Go right now to Stamps.com. Enter FOX. Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee have released a scathing report on the Trump administration's family separation policy at the southern border. Health and Human Services officials were not told about a 2017 pilot program in El Paso, which resulted in hundreds of separations, according to a House Judiciary Committee report. In November of that year, HHS official Jonathan White sent an email to then-acting Customs and Border Patrol Commissioner Kevin McAleenan asking about an uptick in unaccompanied minors. In a response the following month, McAleenan replied HHS should see a decrease soon, but did not reveal the existence of the pilot program or that it was ending. Rachel Sutherland. Fox News. The Trump administration has removed great wolves in most of the U.S. from the endangered species list. The action ends long-standing federal safeguards for them in the lower 48 states, except for a small population of Mexican gray wolves in the southwest. The latest jobs numbers showing improvement. The job market. LRN.FM's free-to-air satellite feeds blanket most of two continents. It was my goal to put our channel there so people without internet could receive our programs and feed pirate radio stations. As our contract with our satellite provider is coming up for another three-year renewal, I have to consider calling it quits. It's rare that we get feedback or support from our satellite users. We started a fundraiser a few years ago, and though there are a bunch of great contributors to it, as of this recording, it covers 15% of our monthly satellite costs. Please email lrn at lrn.fm and tell me how you use the satellite feed. Better yet, chip in at fund.lrn.fm. The costs aren't the issue. We can afford them, but why continue something not valued by the market? Want to help? You can join our satellite fundraiser for just $2 a month at fund.lrn.fm. If we raise enough to keep both channels on the air, awesome. If we raise more, I'll add more channels. If not, we can shut them down and go internet only. It's up to you. Thank you for your support. Fund.lrn.fm. Sources within the Vatican confirmed Tuesday that Pope Benedict XVI has dispatched an elite team of six bishops to sabotage leading contraceptive manufacturer Pfizer. Codenamed Conclave 6, the highly trained team of bishops will reportedly infiltrate the heavily guarded compound, detonate extremely powerful charges at key points within the factory, and then escape to a nearby safe house. The Catholic Church can trust only the best with defending God's plan. Conclave 6 is the deadliest team of bishops I've ever laid out. The Pope denied rumors that a B-team of needle-wielding priests had been deployed to a latex factory in New Jersey to poke tiny holes into thousands of Durex condoms. Locally, the best part of a gay 12-year-old's day is the half hour he spends eating lunch alone in a stairwell. Calling it his only respite from constant ridicule and mockery, 7th grader Ben McElroy says life doesn't get better than the moments he spends quietly laying out his lunch on a secluded staircase while the rest of his classmates are in the cafeteria. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, kicking off the third hour here. Plenty of time for you if you want to join us. Get on the phones. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Ian here. And nobody. And nobody. uh, Last hour, we had a gentleman call in, and he was so excited. He said the S word on the air. We had to to, uh, to dump his call. And it was like the first sentence that he, he had come out of his mouth. He said he just wanted to shoot the S with us, and unfortunately... The pesky FCC requires that we have to dop, uh, drop that call. But Also, I can't handle firearms. I did say uh, to him that he could post the topics into the Twitch chat room and that I would go ahead and, and read them on the air. So here's what he said. Uh, his Twitch username is scramblin0420. He says, uh, I'm just going to say, if you create or sell stuff, start taking any digital currency now. Don't wait. Yes. Good advice? Uh, I think so. I think so. I've got, uh, you know, I've, I, I actually have reallocated myself um, during, during the show, and I've got uh, 10% of my assets in mm-hmm. each of 10 cryptos. 
Um, uh, this is actually the church's assets. Sure. But, um, but the, uh, um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I've, my dollar holdings are like 3%. Uh, so I, I only quibble with one of the things that he said here, and that is that you should take any digital currency. Some of them are so obscure that they're, you know, even though they could be the next great thing, they can be prohibitively difficult to deal with, right? So, like, there's there's 6,000 of these things right now on CoinGecko.com, and there's 7,500 of them on CoinMarketCap.com. These are websites that list mm -hmm. some of the, you know, more noteworthy cryptos and many not so noteworthy, but they've paid the website, so the website lists them. Uh, you know, if somebody was to call and, you know, and, and say they wanted to donate the... 7,000 ranked uh, crypto, there's probably not a whole lot of wallets that will allow you to hold that crypto. So you'd probably have to go and like download the official wallet of that crypto in order to be able to receive that crypto. So you're talking mm -hmm. about putting in a significant time investment in just being able to receive the thing. But as far as receiving any of the top cryptos, like the top 100, I'd say, yeah, that might be worth your while. Um, otherwise, you'd want to look at the crypto and analyze whether or not you think that this new th this is going to be the next big thing, and whether or not you mm -hmm. want to invest whatever time it would take to actually be able to receive it. Because not every wallet is going to support every crypto out there. Yeah, I mean, normally I will uh, I'll take any uh, crypto that a will fit in my wallet and b I'm able to trade it because yeah, that's the other thing. If you, you know the. Uh, I I don't get accounts easily. Uh, people apparently don't want to trade with me who are uh, who own cryptocurrency, uh, who own crypto exchanges or banks. Have you so, tried Bitcoin.com? Uh, yeah, I, I'm in America. Haven't you heard of a VPN? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to lie to Roger though. I guess. I, I don't know. I guess I. Uh, I, I guess he doesn't actually care. Probably, but I suspect he doesn't care. About yeah, that. I mean that's um, not an official statement. <laughs> you know, I don't represent Bitcoin.com. They're just an advertiser, but they do have an exchange. Uh, I just think that you know, I agree with you. Nobody, it's it's hard. I mean, who do I tell them who I am? Though, I mean, don't they? Aren't I think they going let, to want some KYC? I think that there's a tier of user that you can just be an email. That you can just oh wow I think so oh wow I wonder how big that uh, how big that tier is I don't know I don't know, know what the limits get are ten accounts like that yeah I don't I don't know what the limits are it might be something you want to look into yeah uh, but yeah, you're right definitely. it's a real problem what you're talking about nobody of these domestic Bitcoin exchanges in mm -hmm. fact we just saw in the news recently Kraken which is one of the top I don't know top five probably top three domestic uh, Bitcoin exchanges out there. They have just gotten worse and worse and worse over time. Uh, they booted me out earlier this year after a few years of you know good relationship with them. They got rid yeah. of me because Bank of America came to them and demanded they send a wire transfer back that I had sent them from Bank of America, which they then did. And then I had to fight with Bank of America over that wire transfer, which I ended up actually winning uh, in that particular case. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kr Kraken had no problem just you know sending back a bunch of money that uh, that I had sent over to them, and then they canceled my account after that yeah and subsequently they canceled aria's account uh not too long thereafter and i don't i don't think they even let you in the door did they? yeah i mean that's the difference between me and the rest of the world they 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 screw it everybody else after after a year or after a month or after a while right they just hit me right up front uh well they also became a bank within the last i don't know two three months there was a big announcement that kraken was the first Wyoming approved crypto bank. Well, now mm -hmm. there's a second. Blockchain pioneer Caitlin Long, who I actually met like two or three years ago at the. Uh, do you remember going out to the blockchain conference here in New Hampshire? Sure, sure. How that many of those did you go to? Uh, I only went to the one. Just the one. Okay. That was the one out at the, uh, like the farmhouse. Yep. So. I think it was the previous year, so you probably didn't meet this lady, but uh, Caitlin Long was actually at that conference the year prior to that, mm -hmm. and she was working on, she was actually behind the scenes on the Wyoming 
legislation that they passed there that made Wyoming actually more of a crypto-friendly state than even New Hampshire. And New Hampshire has some good crypto-friendly legislation that has passed over the last few years, but Wyoming went even further, mm-hmm. including a, a banking authorization. And so now the lady who helped write these laws has started her own bank based in Wyoming. Her name is Caitlin Long. She's now the CEO of her own Special Purpose Depository Institution, or SPDI, in Wyoming. The story from Coindesk.com. Avanti Financial's banking charter was approved unanimously by the Wyoming State Banking Board on Wednesday, becoming the second newly chartered bank in the state in 2020 after Kraken Financial earned approval last month. Avanti, like Kraken, has now uh, now has to jump through a few hoops like raising more capital before it can be granted a certificate of authority to operate. Uh, Long told Coindesk in an email, quote, Kraken definitely captured attention, but now that there's a second one chartered, it's no longer a one-off situation and a trend is in motion, she said. Along with the charter approval, the banking board approved Avanti's future issuance of Avit, a programmable electronic currency that's redeemable at par with the U.S. dollar. So this new crypto bank is going to launch its own uh, dollar-backed crypto token. Mm-hmm. The Which is a sensible thing to do. I mean, sure. it's, uh, it's just it's not where I'd want to park my money. It's something I'd want to use for extra liquidity or just because I can't get a bank to take my money. <laughs> the Avit is not a security token, meaning it's not a digital representation of an investment that's expected to generate returns. It will initially be issued on the Bitcoin sidechain called Liquid, and then on Ethereum, she said. The bank has previously raised $5 million in an angel investor round and brought on a C-suite of five executives from the traditional banking and digital asset industries, including a Bitcoin core developer. So, you know, again, I'm glad to see news like this, even though I know that uh, there's almost no chance that, even though I've met the lady, that I'd be able to open an account. Uh, there was a, because, you know, I've mm-hmm. been selling Bitcoin for the church that uh, that I'm with as just an, an outreach project towards peace for the last several years, and in that mm-hmm. process have managed to get myself run out of every major bank. Well, they uh, hate peace. Yeah. Well, they hate Bitcoin, too, yeah. cryptocurrency. Well, for the same reason. They're, they're, they're all in on the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what they bought, and uh, you know they want to make sure their investment pays off. Uh, there was actually a situation where Aria, one of our co-hosts, had looked at opening up a credit union. I don't know if you remember her talking oh, yeah. about that. Did, has she gotten turned down for that yet? So finally, she heard back from this company that was supposed to help her kind of like hold her hand through the process. And it was such a, a just obscene amount of paperwork hoops and re- regulations, which I knew is what was going to happen. It totally uh-huh. turned her off. So, yeah, that's not happening. OK, so she didn't get finally turned down, though. She 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 broke before they had to actually tell her no. That's correct. Yeah, wow. it's, a, it's a huge burden. I mean, she thought it was going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah, well that's why that th- what you need is a board of four, five lawyers to yeah. run the thing, right. but then they won't do business with you. So yeah, exactly. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. So kudos to Avanti uh, for becoming a, a Bitcoin friendly bank. What that'll actually mean in the long run, we'll see. This is Free Talk Live. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the values soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. On a multidimensional probe, the Siskov Transtemporal Vehicle Clio discovers two entire universes have been annihilated in a massive time-traveling accident. Robert Kaminsky and his crew race home with the news, only to learn their own universe is next. To pull off the impossible, they'll have to embrace the unpalatable by placing their trust in the admin, Siskov's xenophobic sister universe, and the same people who tried to kill them all only months before. The Valkyrie Protocol by David Weber and Jacob Hollow. Available October 6th wherever books are sold. Visit bangbooks at bang.com for more. 
What if the United States and the Soviet Union had fought on land, sea, air, and the astral plane, struggled for dominion across parallel dimensions, or on the surface of the moon? What wonders would have been unveiled? What terrors would have haunted mankind from those dark and dismal dimensions? Come closer, peer through a glass darkly, and discover the horrifying alternative visions of World War III from some of today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror, Weird World War III. Available now from Bain Books at BainBooks.com. News from news.bitcoin.com. The U.S. government moves to regulate cryptocurrencies after the Attorney General publishes enforcement framework. $4.8 billion still missing from the Silk Road. Some of the oldest Bitcoins were just moved. Is Satoshi Nakamoto back in the game? Publicly traded companies move more cash into Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com is your source for getting started with cryptocurrencies. Getting a wallet, buying Bitcoin cash, mining, and all the latest cryptocurrency news at news.bitcoin.com. The Free State Project has reached its goal of 20,000 liberty lovers who've pledged to move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what part of New Hampshire should be your destination. If so, consider Keene. You'll find more than 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com. Keene is famous for its historic, publicity-generating activism, as well as being the liberty media capital of the world. It's home to freekeene.com, New Hampshire's destination for liberty activism, news, and opinion. For years, we've been compiling over 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com, where you'll learn about some of what's happening here and what makes Keene a great place to live. If you love liberty, you'll probably enjoy anywhere you end up in the Shire. But do your due diligence first. Please visit move.freekeen.com for the full list of over 150 reasons to move to Keen. That's move.freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com to receive our usually weekly news updates by email. Plus, we have a Twitter account at twitter.freetalklive.com, and you can follow us on the decentralized Mastodon platform at toot.freetalklive.com. So please follow us at toot.freetalklive.com and sign up for our emails at news.freetalklive.com. Bitcoin.com has launched a trading platform at local.bitcoin.com allowing you to buy or sell Bitcoin cash via dozens of payment methods like PayPal, Venmo, bank deposit, remittances, or meeting in person with cash. There are no ID requirements to sign up for and use the site, and all communications between buyers and sellers are encrypted. Finally, a global trading platform that respects your privacy. Visit local.bitcoin.com to get started trading Bitcoin cash. Local.bitcoin.com now you can follow LRN.FM on the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, toot.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free and bring up what you want. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We have also our chat server it is a Matrix chat server, which is pretty cool, actually. We've been using it for, I think, at least a month and a half, maybe two months now. Uh, and we've got, what, a couple dozen public chat rooms? I don't even know how many private ones there are because they're, they're encrypted. So I, you know, if you've made a private room and didn't tell anybody about or you know, you, you haven't announced it, uh, then I, I don't even know it exists, and I'm you know the administrator of the server. Well, Hampton so. would, I'm sure, be able to tell that it existed. There has to be an object ID there for it There probably is, but we wouldn't be able to know what it is. You wouldn't know what right? was in it, yeah. but you'd know you had a bag. Yeah, so uh, you can go to the Matrix chat server. Go to chat.lrn.fm. It's a web page that will give you the instructions on how to get in and chat with other Free Talk Live listeners. And like I said, there's at least probably a couple dozen rooms there. Maybe like eight of them are uh, the sort of the uh, official rooms on the server, and the other one's just created by listeners just like you. So head on over to chat.lrn.fm. And also, 
I want to make sure you know about Divi. There are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there, and one of them that uh, we think you ought to consider is Divi. The team behind Divi, very libertarian uh, bunch of guys. We met them at Anarchapulco a few years ago, and we've got a, a Divi masternode set up here. In fact, two of them uh, we've set up. One that uh, recently we wanted to do it ourselves rather than use their super easy-to-do process. I wanted to see if you could do it the hard way, and you can. Uh, I, had, I had Michael Hampton do it the hard way for us. Uh, but if you want to set up a uh, <laughs> Masternode. It's still the easy way if you didn't do it yourself. <laughs> sure, but nobody. The point is to see if it could be done uh, individually. It's to see true. if you if you could do it uh, without having to go through the the Divi system. So Divi right. is made up a, a very easy to use Masternode system where you basically just tell them you want a Masternode, you fund the the Masternode with the required amount of Divi. And then you have it, and you have to pay a PayPal fee in order to to host it. It's super easy and super simple. But one of my uh, my questions about it was, well, can you decentralize this process? Can somebody who wants to just go ahead and do their own master node without having to go through the official setup channels? And the answer is yes, yes, you can, and we've done that. So that's what I wanted to to prove that that it was possible to do that. Uh, and you can. So if you got the chops, you can do it that way or just set it up through their easy to use system, which uh, involves downloading their software from diviproject.org, D-I-V-I project.org. If you got questions or you get stuck or you want to buy some Divi directly from the Divi team, you can do that. They've got a Telegram channel to get in touch with them. Go to diviproject.org. As we uh, continue here, the toll-free number, if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. Just, you know, sharing a little bit of good news there for you about a bank that has been pioneered out in Wyoming. It's the second crypto-friendly bank, or what they're calling a special purpose depository institution. Now, there have been banks already in the United States, like Silvergate Bank out in California, that has been welcoming towards people in the cryptocurrency industry. And when I say that, I mean welcoming towards... Not us. Not us, but welcoming towards the obedient people, the people who want to jump through all the government hoops and go through all the know your customer and all the BS requirements that governments have. So there have been some banks, like maybe a handful of them at most, who've been willing to, let's say, have an account for an exchange change or allow people in the crypto business, mm -hmm. the industry side of things to hold accounts. So this isn't unprecedented what's happened in Wyoming, but mm -hmm. something different is is happening in Wyoming because they're allowing more uh, cryptocurrency business to happen there and they're encouraging it in their uh, in their regulatory structures. So, uh, you know, while at this while I realize that this probably isn't going to help those of us who are in the independent world of cryptocurrency, those of us who don't want to mm -hmm. rely on these centralized institutions, it still is a good thing for these old dinosaurs, these banks, to mix in with cryptocurrency, I think that ultimately is something that we should want to see happen, simply because some people, they want, they're not going to be on the initial, uh, the initial curve or the cutting edge of technology. They're going to want to wait until they see that this technology is more accepted, that more businesses are coming on board with it and accepting it, that, that banks are starting to talk about it, or even offer accounts where customers can deposit cryptocurrencies. Now, for those of us who understand cryptocurrency and who've been in it for a long time, like you and I, we may not see the value you know, in doing something like that, because one of the values of cryptocurrency is that you can be your own bank, in that you hold your own crypto, that you are responsible for your own uh, your own money. That's true, but the, there's one thing missing from the be your own bank thing, mm -hmm. and that's tellers. Mm -hmm. There have to, in order for us to really be our own bank, we've got to have people widespread throughout the United States who will buy and sell crypto face to face for cash. Sure. I mean, there are some of those people. Uh, there are some, but if you need some money in a hurry, you can't They're not everywhere. count on, yeah. right, banks are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we're not competing with the banking center until human ATMs are everywhere. Well, I mean, human ATMs are one thing, but we are seeing a large number of physical ATMs of machines or Bitcoin mm -hmm. vending machines that are on the rise. So those numbers have been going up. In fact, little old Keene, New Hampshire just got its fourth uh, Bitcoin vending yeah. machine in town here or, Bit or Bitcoin ATM. Yeah. 
Actually, that reminds me. I've got to get mine finish setting mine up. I've got to get the rest of the credentials from you. Indeed. Yeah, we can talk about that uh, later on. So, I mean, that that's a good thing, right? Like, if you're in a town where you've got more than one cryptocurrency vending machine, then that really does mean that basically at any time, somebody who wants to can go and acquire mm-hmm. uh, cryptocurrency. So, I mean, we are seeing that. And it's. Yeah. Well, you can. Are any of them two way here? Uh, three out of. Um, I think at least three of them are. Okay. How yeah. much How much would it cost you round trip to make a deposit and then withdraw it again? Ooh, um, well, if you were, when, by that you mean to purchase Bitcoin and then get cash and then for that sell Bitcoin? It back. I think currently the rates are probably at around, depending on which machine you use, uh, as, as low as 14% to as much as probably 18%, depending on which machine in town you use. That would be on the buy side, okay. and then you might be looking at 5% to sell it back. So you'd be paying out another 5% to pay it back? or you Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, that would be about 20%. Um, if bank fees were that high, most people wouldn't, wouldn't bank. Use them. So we're yeah. not quite there on, no, we're not, on we're competing close. with bank. We're getting much closer. Well, it's just nice to have the availability, and that that is an important factor. But that's that's where you know some of these banks are going to come into play. Where if Mm -hmm. you can get a bank that's friendly to crypto that offers accounts in crypto, then it'll be easy for people to convert from their dollars into uh, into whatever other cryptos the bank offers. So Mm -hmm. that's useful. In fact, there was a bank in Puerto Rico that somebody turned me on to. That said, oh, you should go apply at this bank. They're crypto friendly banks. So I'm like, all right, I'll try it, see what happens. And I had a really good conversation with the CEO actually of the bank, but ultimately the compliance department turned me down because I have a church. They actually gave me the reason. CEO, I spoke with him later. He gave me the reason why. He says a church is like a red flag and they don't want anything to do with churches. Interesting. Yeah. He said he wasn't supposed to tell me that either. Huh. So Maybe that's what I need to get rid of. But I don't understand. There's so many churches out there. They must have bank accounts. The toll-free number is 850. Again, all these, mm-hmm. all these uh, yeah. TV televangelists or whatever, you know, they're putting that money somewhere. 855, 450 free. They're cash and checks, right? It's yeah. Free Talk Live. News from news.bitcoin.com. The U.S. government moves to regulate cryptocurrencies after the attorney general publishes enforcement framework. $4.8 billion still missing from the Silk Road. Some of the oldest Bitcoins were just moved. Is Satoshi Nakamoto back in the game? Publicly traded companies move more cash into Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com is your source for getting started with cryptocurrencies. Getting a wallet, buying Bitcoin cash, mining, and all the latest cryptocurrency news at news.bitcoin.com. From New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestselling author Larry Correa comes the latest chapter in the epic military fantasy saga of The Forgotten Warrior. When the Grand Inquisitor perverts the law in his genocidal plot to kill every man, woman, and child in the untouchable cast, only the traitor Ashok Vidal and the Sons of the Black Sword stand in his way. If it's war he wants, it is war he will get. Bane Books presents Destroyer of Worlds. Available September 1st wherever books are sold. Visit MonsterHunterNation.com for more. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. AgoristHosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agrist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. And some people will try dirty tricks to silence your voice. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, you cannot tolerate any skullduggery. So go with agoristhosting.com. Have a WordPress or blog site, but you're not satisfied with performance or uptime? Or just want raw hosting? Want to pay with Bitcoin? Agris Hosting specializes in high-performance hosting with personalized service. Go to agoristhosting.com and click on the button that says Get Hosted. That's agoristhosting.com.
I'm crazy about My Magic Mud. This is the most important oral care product created this millennium, and I'm not kidding. We all have different opinions on politics and issues, but we all have mouths. And I want yours to be as clean as possible, with teeth as bright as they were meant to be. I will never be without My Magic Mud. It's a little surprising, but man, does it work. If you only listen to one thing I say ever, go to MyMagicMud.com and get 20% off with code FTL. MyMagicMud.com, code FTL. The LRN.FM social media channels have been revamped. We've eliminated Facebook and focused on other platforms like Twitter and Mastodon, the decentralized alternative to Twitter. On our accounts, you'll find posts from multiple LRN.FM show hosts together in one place. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm or better yet, move to the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, T-O-O-T dot L-R-N.FM. I think you'll like it. We have some good news. The indictments against Ross Albrecht in the District of Maryland were dismissed with prejudice, meaning they can never be refiled. This is especially good because those indictments contain the only charge ever made that Ross engaged in murder for hire. This was a serious allegation that Ross Albrecht denies. It was never prosecuted or ruled on by a jury, but was trumpeted by the federal government and the media as if it were proven fact. The Maryland court held these indictments for almost five years, poisoning Ross's case and leaving him under a cloud of unproven allegations. As explained in Ross's appeal to the Supreme Court, the fact that the judge used these allegations to give Ross a draconian sentence of double life without parole violated his Sixth Amendment right to a jury trial. Judges are required to issue sentences based on convictions decided by a jury, not unproven allegations, never even charged at trial. Although this is a positive development, the dropped indictment will not set Ross free. Now, a presidential pardon is Ross's only hope of freedom. Sign the petition at freeross.org. Freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Yeah! Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free if you want to join us here. The number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. We are doing a satellite fundraiser uh, where you can join our Patreon over at fund.lrn.fm, F-U-N-D.lrn.fm. For 2 bucks a month or $4.20 or $13.37, there's different tiers that you can join, and it helps us continue our satellite programming that we've been doing since 2010, actually. So it's been about a decade now. Uh, that Free Talk Live and the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM have been available 24-7 over North and Central America. And we've been over Sub-Saharan Africa since 2012. So we've got two different satellites. And uh, the Shire Free Church, my church, is matching contributions on this satellite fundraiser. So if we can get to $500 raised, we're at around $240, I think, right now, uh, thanks to our couple dozen contributors. That if we can get to $500, then that'll be matched and we'll have a total of $1,000 to go towards the satellite fund, which is currently what we're about what we're spending. Uh, so it'd be nice to be able to have that, uh, that, uh, that amount covered. The idea here is to, you know, to have people show that this is actually a worthy project. A lot of people say that we should continue the satellite broadcasting. I want to continue it, but I would like to feel like people actually care. So please go to fund.lrn.fm. That's F-U-N-D, fund.lrn.fm. And again, Shire Free Church will double the contributions. Nice. So thank you to those who have stepped up for that. And again, you can do it for as little as two bucks. Let's go to David. He's in New Mexico. You're on Free Talk Live. Two bucks a month. Go ahead, David. Go, go ask you what? what go that? ahead, David. Oh, Okay. So I was telling you the other day about abusive judges, one of the techniques that they use when they filibuster and they don't Mm -hmm. look you in the eye. And the point is they don't want you to be able to make an objection on the record or say what you want, uh, make some other demand on the record. And so a couple of the techniques they use is one, like, like I said, they don't, I mean, it's the same thing as in real life. They don't look you in the eye so that you're not recognized. Mm -hmm. And then they talk continuously like I am. So they're not leaving a gap for somebody else to get in. And if you're a pro se, pro per litigant, you feel intimidated, like you're not supposed to speak unless you're spoken to in the courtroom, right? And you're not. And what they're going to do is they're going to keep talking like this, and they're going to do their business, and then they're going to say, "Okay, we're off the record," and the hearing is over, and you didn't get a chance to uh, make your legal assertions for later appeal on the record, 
uh, or to get an immediate uh, action in, in that lower court uh, case hearing, and they've effectively shut you down, shut you up, shut you out. And so I was telling you about the case of M. Monica Zamora, uh, who is a judge in a case that I had, and, and uh, she was doing that technique. It was the very first hearing in a custody case where my kids were the step-parent uh, on the record. In this record, Kurt Odin Elich, this will come up later, was attempting to uh, terminate my parental rights as a step-parent, and uh, he, him being the step-parent, and adopt my own kid to him. And um, it, so in that hearing, this judge was doing that, that filibustering technique. Mm-hmm. And what she did is uh, when she hit the period in one of her sentences where she was going to take a breath, and I was waiting for it. I was waiting for her to, uh, you know, for like the 30 seconds before that, I was planning my move. And the second that she hit that period and she took a breath, I said, I said, I interjected what I was going to say. She happened to have said, uh, because this is a contested ho- adoption, I have to appoint an attorney for the children. And then she took her breath and I said, and you have to appoint one for me. And she turned to me and she said, oh, no, we don't. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just picked up the printout that I had printed out, and I read her one sentence that said that she had to appoint me an attorney. And she uh, uh, did I think you already told us this story and, once. Were you right, going to go here, in a new here, direction here, with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the continuation is that uh, – and now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, you had said uh, that you needed an attorney appointed. For yourself, yeah, and 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 so the, the 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 continuation is that had I allowed her to shut me down, I wouldn't have made my assertion on the record, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't have gotten a court-appointed attorney. And and the whole point is, I can't afford my own own attorney. So I ha- had I been the typical person, because I was pretty damned aggressive. Right, you would have been run right over top of, I, and you would have had been run right lost over your top rights. Of and I, and I wouldn't have gotten an attorney, which I had a statutory right to, which she had, or she claimed she had no idea I had a right to it, and she never She's a would liar. have appointed me attorney. Uh, yeah, and most uh, right, and most people would would most people in my position wouldn't have known the difference, wouldn't right. have fighted, would have been without an attorney, and they would have lost their children basically immediately on the spot. Yep. And and that was in 2009, and that case is still open because I'm an a-hole. Hmm. Hmm. When so are people going to take up arms against a government that will even steal your children from you? Right. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I'm, re- I'm ready to join. Obviously, I can't incite it because that's a criminal offense. But if it spontaneously happens, I'm in. I'm sitting here waiting for the rest of you to make a move, and I'm going to move with you. I'm right there with you, bro. Thanks, David. Uh, a bunch of us have already made a move, though. We've moved to New Hampshire, liberty-minded folks, voluntarists, libertarians, and uh, liberty-loving anarchists have moved. Thousands of people have moved because we understand that whatever the future holds, if we are not in close proximity with one another, there's a good chance that it's not going to work out for freedom. So we need to get people together. That's it's number true. one. That's number one. Whatever your whatever you know plan you have, whether it's political, whether it's inside the system, outside the system, direct action, uh, or something else entirely, you got to have allies. Even if the system completely collapsed, I would need to be surrounded by well-armed and like-minded people if I wanted to keep any kind of freedom. Speaking of like-minded people, nobody, i got a little bit of good news for you here. Uh, TheGatewayPundit.com is reporting that Libertarian vice presidential candidate uh, Spike Cohen appears to be outdrawing Joe Biden rallies. Nice. So uh, the Libertarian vice presidential candidate, Spike Cohen, has been going to Waffle Houses uh, on a tour, apparently. Or at least he was at one Waffle House in Ohio. And he, uh, according to this report at Gateway Pund- thegatewaypundit.com, is drawing larger crowds. Now, it's not hard to outdraw Joe Biden because he's had just some of the s- most pathetic, uh, sparsely attended political rallies. Yeah, he has like year. 10 people show up to see him. Right. And there's at least 12 people here at this uh, Spike Cohen rally outside of the uh, the Waffle House. Maybe is that a even- rally or was he just having lunch? Because I've seen, I mean, he he draws pretty well, usually. Yeah? Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know what typical is, but I'm okay. seeing maybe like 20 people here at this, uh, at this particular rally. According to, according to the story, uh, Biden's rallies continue to draw only a handful of supporters and are populated by mostly media. So when you look at a rally and you see 90% media, 
you know, mm-hmm. or seventy percent uh, media, ten or twenty percent ra- or ten or twenty percent paid paid like ra- um, volunteer, not volunteers, but like campaign staff. That's the word I'm looking for. And then ten mm-hmm. percent attendees. You got to only account the uh, the actual attendees. Don't count the media as attendees of the rally. Yeah. Spike Cohen, though, the Libertarian vice presidential candidate, uh, is apparently going on a Waffle House tour. So this isn't just a one stop at one Waffle House. He's going across Ohio, going to multiple Waffle House locations. Now, I don't know if he's got uh, permission from Waffle House to do this, but it'd be interesting if he did. I think anybody's got got permission to go to Waffle House. I mean, unless they've showed up drunk and like broken the table or something. (laughs) Uh, Cohen, who thankfully isn't actually wearing a mask at this rally, which is nice to see because this this one of the sad parts about the Joe Jorgensen rally here in Keene was that the entire campaign staff was masked up. Um, Joe herself, though, wasn't, so I was I was happy to see that. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't care if people wear masks so long as they're not trying to make me wear one. Yeah, I mean, they didn't make people wear them, but they did have like a clapboard sign out there, uh, a frame sign that was strongly encouraging uh, people to wear masks. So it was pretty clear that the official campaign stance was in favor of the masks on the Joe Jorgensen Uh, campaign. Is that it or is that what they expected to be? least problematic for bringing people in because Maybe. really yeah, if you're just running for president the the goal is to become president yeah. not to not to have your preferences and clothing they could just be pandering you're right about that but at least it's good news that uh, the libertarian vice presidential candidate who you know the vp candidate never has the same name recognition as the actual presidential candidate that he's out turning he's got more crowds coming out for him than old Joe Biden does at his campaign events. So what is that going to mean for the voting results coming up next week? If you want to comment, you can join us here. It's Free Talk Live. You hear the headlines. You know health insurance is a real mess right now. Premiums have skyrocketed, and in most cases, you're stuck with your plan until open enrollment. But there's a government rule that allows you to qualify for lower health insurance rates if your life has changed. That means if you've changed jobs, if you're having a child, if you're getting married, if you're getting divorced, even if you run a small business or you're self-employed, this law may qualify you to get lower health insurance rates. Call the health insurance hotline today learn how this 10-minute call can help you get lower health insurance rates this is a free service to help consumers learn the laws to help them qualify for lower health insurance rates so call right now to learn more 800-670-0946 800-670-0946 Call 800-670-0946, 800-670-0946. There's so much hand sanitizer on the market, but beware, not all hand sanitizers are created equal. That's why you want to use 2020 Safe Hand Sanitizer. You can trust the hand sanitizer on 2020safe.net to be made with the highest quality ingredients, American-made, with American ingredients, employing Americans. Log on now to 2020safe.net and order your one liter today. Normally $29.99, but reduced to $19.99, so hurry while supplies last and receive a bonus. That's right. You'll receive a 30-count bottle of Immune Booster, a $39.95 value, free, by using code GCN at checkout. Right now, click 2020safe.net. That's 2020safe.net to get our one-liter bottle of high-quality hand sanitizer with your free bonus. A 30-count bottle of Immune Booster valued at $39.95. Remember to enter GCN at checkout. And the bonus is yours, free, 2020safe.net. Join liberty-minded voluntarists, anarchists, and libertarians from June 28th through July 4th for ForkFest 2021 at Rogers Campground in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. ForkFest happens the week after the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and ForkFest is decentralized, which means no one is in charge. That also means there's no ticket cost. Just reserve your camping, RV site, or motel room with Rogers Campground for June 28th through July 4th. Where better to celebrate Independence Day than around other freedom-loving activists in the Shire? You can relax and enjoy the camaraderie of like-minded people, or you can create whatever experience or event you'd like others to have. 
If you're planning an event for ForkFest, be sure to let others know in advance. You can connect with fellow ForkFesters via the unofficial Telegram chat or the ForkFest forum. Links to those are on the unofficial website, ForkFest.party. Mark your calendar for June 28th through July 4th, 2021. We'll see you at ForkFest.party. There are lots of ways to listen to Free Talk Live. Our podcast has been around since podcasts began, and now the FTL feed is loaded with content besides our full show archives. Did you know that we make it easy for you to customize your podcast subscriptions? We have different feeds, one that includes only our full shows, one with just the Daily Digest, and our main feed that includes everything. You decide what you listen to. It's quick and easy to customize your feeds at feeds.freetalklive.com. That's feeds.freetalklive.com. There are basically two types of advertising, direct response and branding. Radio is great for direct response with its low cost to listener ratio, but audio can't be beat for branding, which is a longer term endeavor. You want to be the first thing that someone thinks of when they think about your product or service. If you have a local business that you want kept top of mind in your community, call the station. If you need national reach, Free Talk Live's got around 200 radio stations, millions of monthly listening sessions, can suit all budgets, and if we don't think we're right for you, we'll tell you. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can join us, talk about whatever's on your mind. In the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Nobody. Uh, nobody, you do a show. It's called Nobody Tells the Truth, and it is heard on Friday nights. It's true. Roughly 1030 Eastern Time is when the show gets started, and you can watch it exclusively on our DLive and Twitch channels, dlive.lrn.fm, twitch.lrn.fm. You can follow us on either of those platforms and see Nobody Tells the Truth Groovy. Friday nights. So make uh, make a mark on your calendar for that. Uh, I don't know what you're going to discuss this week. Do you know? I do not know. It's probably going to be politics and economics and uh, the, the usual stuff. Um, but... Uh, it's it's all I never know going in what I'm going to end up talking about. Tune in and find out tomorrow night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern on twitch.lrn.fm, dlive.lrn.fm. Uh, it starts up about a half an hour after we finish the radio show that we do every single night, which is what you're listening to right now. Free Talk Live airs all seven nights per week, live from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern time, and of course archived at freetalklive.com. Coming up next year, you want to definitely mark your calendar for ForkFest 2021. It'll be the fifth ForkFest. This year's was the fourth, next year the fifth, and it'll be June 28th through July 4th. It is a decentralized libertarian camping festival, and it follows the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Uh, so ForkFest will be the week after that, just like it was this year. So this year was the first time that ForkFest came after the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and it seemed like most people appreciated that change. So mm -hmm. that's the way it's going to continue. Um, I, thought it, I thought that would work out well, because it's 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 best to, for the le for the less publicized thing to follow the more publicized mm -hmm. thing because once once you're there, um, you know, once you've seen a week of minarchy, how can you resist staying for a week of anarchy? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good uh, that's a good line. Good tagline there. Yeah. So check out ForkFest.Party. There's an unofficial Telegram chat. That's an unofficial website. And there's also an unofficial forum because everything's unofficial with ForkFest. You want to create a competing website? Go right ahead, by all means. Uh, you can do that. But there is still a set of rules that do need to be followed. So it's not truly anarchy because there is... Uh, Rogers Campground. It's private property. Well, and anarchy got is an absence of rulers, not an absence of rules. True. And in this case, you would have chosen your ruler by consenting to going to the campground and agreeing to their, their rules. And they don't have that many of them. It's pretty... It's pretty lackluster as far as the uh, the rules there at uh, Rogers Campground. So you can create what you want. Maybe you want to put on a I show. I don't think lackluster is the word you wanted. I think no, laid, it's back. Better word. laid back. Buster, l lackluster is like crappy. Okay. Laid back. Not enforced heavily. Wonderful. Yeah. 
Uh, it's really a cool place. It's a great campground. It's beautiful. And the, the people are, of course, the reason why you want to go to hang out with uh, liberty-minded folks for an entire week. And what better way to celebrate Independence Day than around other freedom-loving activists? You can create the event you want to have happen. So it's all up to the attendees. There's no official schedule. So it's just like whatever you want to do. You want to put on a show? Go right ahead. You want to put on a musical act or a stage show or a comedy event or an open mic or a karaoke or whatever. Go right ahead. It's up to you to create it at ForkFest. It's uh, June 28th through July 4th of 2021. We'll see you there. ForkFest.party. All right, so we had some good news uh, in the show tonight and now some not so good news to finish this one out. I saw a post that an activist here in the area posted to our local Keen chat room on Telegram. A post by Governor Chris Sununu, His Excellency, here in New Hampshire, announcing the latest... Excellent. No, not so much. Uh, the uh, uh, Announcing the latest restrictions to be shoved down the throats of all restaurateurs and their customers, apparently... According to WMUR.com, customers of New Hampshire restaurants will soon be asked to provide basic contact information to help facilitate COVID-19 contact tracing investigations. Governor Chris Sununu said the requirement will begin Saturday on Halloween. Customers will be asked for their name and phone number, and restaurants will record their time of arrival. So what happens if the customer doesn't answer the question? Oh, I'll answer. I'll identify myself as Eleanor Roosevelt. (laughs) And yeah, what happens if the customer gives a name that is not their legal name uh, to the restaurateur? Will the restaurateur get all huffy? The funny thing is, the restaurateur is likely to get huffy if I do give my legal name. If I refuse to show ID, (laughs) that's a great point. Uh, now, they're not asking for ID. They're just asking for a name and phone number at this point. And that, by the way, this is something that's been going on in Vermont from what I'm, uh, I've been told for the last several months. So now it's coming to New Hampshire. Sununu said the information will help contact tracing teams if it's learned that someone in the restaurant has COVID-19. Are there contact tracing teams in New Hampshire? Because uh-huh. that's the first I've heard of that. Oh, no. that's The reason you haven't heard of it is because they haven't been up your butt. Uh, there was actually a guy in our Keen chat, one of the visiting young people who's working here for Young Americans for Liberty, he came to one of our Social Sunday events. He said that they contacted him because somebody on the Young Americans for Liberty staff came down with COVID, and so the contact tracers were telling them they couldn't leave their hotel, and that if this and that, they were going to get targeted or something like that. Did somebody really come down with with COVID on the campaign for Liberty? Uh, I mean, a lot of times these tests are positive, but they're not actually positive. You know, the the person didn't actually submit. You know, there there was uh, some news story recently about a guy who sent. Or maybe it wasn't a news story, but there was a claim that a guy sent a test in with no sample whatsoever, and it came back positive. So, yeah, yeah. So just because it came back positive doesn't mean you actually have COVID. Uh, but yeah, somebody mm-hmm. supposedly had COVID, so the contact tracers were up these guys' butts trying to get information about where they've been and who they are and who they've been associated with and threatening them and uh, and threatening them with quarantine. And so, yeah, that stuff is going on wow. in New Hampshire. Yeah, see, I was... I'm I'm afraid, especially if they uh, start testing kids in school. Mm-hmm. One of the scary things there is you could send your kids off to school, and maybe they don't come home that day, and maybe you can find out where they are, and maybe you, maybe can't, you can't find out where they are. Now, in Sununu's announcement about this, which is where I originally found out, it was a sort of a cr- screenshot of his Facebook update where he says it was due to the request. That they're doing this not on their own volition. It was the request, he says, of the New Hampshire Lodging and Restaurant Association, or the NHLRA. It would be interesting to call them up and see if they actually made that request. Well, Mike Summers, the president and CEO of the NHLRA, had this to say, quote, Is it a little bit of a challenge for the industry? Yes, it is. Does it certainly create a little bit of pushback from some of our customers? We suspect it likely will. Unquote. Summers uh, said the proposal came from restaurant owners to be able to assist state health officials with contact tracing and to avoid the public announcements that have been made by the Department of Health and Human Services when trying to track down patrons after a positive case is identified. So uh, does this association 
want its members to go bankrupt? Is that what they're working on? Is that their goal? Because, Maybe so. Because, you know, this, this COVID lie, that seems to be one of the chief goals behind it. So what he says here is he thinks this is going to help the restaurants because right now, if somebody gets sick... The Department of Health and Human Services is announcing publicly that, hey, this uh, person got sick. They were down at Jimmy's Bar and Grill. Now, why uh, did they pick Jimmy's Bar and Grill instead of, I mean, these people have obviously been in one res- more mm-hmm. than one restaurant in the last two weeks. I wonder yeah. who they pick, who they're going to highlight. Good question. But he seems to believe that if they start collecting this information, that that would make it so the bureaucrats won't call them out publicly. Yeah, there were Jews in Germany who thought that if they worked as uh, as masters in the slave factories mm. and uh, that that they wouldn't be killed, but many of them were actually killed. It says here there have been several clusters of the coronavirus connected with New Hampshire restaurants and state contact tracers. Try to get in touch with everyone who was in the restaurant and might have had close contact with the cases at the time in cases in which not everyone can be located. A public health alert is issued to try to track down anyone else who might have been infected. Summer says the change is part of the effort businesses are making to be safe. He says, quote, staff are wearing masks. We're asking our customers to wear masks. We're working on sanitation. We're working on all these things. And if the oh, missing it's not piece- my kind of restaurant then. And if the missing piece in that puzzle is really trying to assist the Department of Health and Human Services in their contact tracing, then clearly this is something that we can step up and do. So they want to be even more associated with the government. They want to be even more uh, unpaid government enforcers. They do or he does, because I will bet that most restaurants don't have any desire for this. Well, if that's true, then they need to get the hell out of the restaurant association that they may be a member of. Maybe we should send a mailing to all of their uh, all of their members. I suspect they won't give you that information. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. <laughs>Remember when you first heard about Bitcoin? How long did it take you to realize this little project would soon change the world? Do you kind of wish you had gotten involved sooner? Well, now is your chance to be a part of the next revolution in money. Intercoin is working to finally make crypto go mainstream. It's designed to be scalable enough to support everyday payments and even elections without the state. Bitcoin was originally supposed to be a peer-to-peer cash system, the way we would all pay one another without having to trust any third party. But instead, over time, it mostly became a store of value. That's because every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network must put all transactions into a block, and that block can only hold so much. If crypto is to become mainstream for people to use it for everyday payments, we need a new architecture, one that is as secure as Bitcoin while being far more scalable. Check out innercoin.org to find out more and maybe pick up some of those coins for yourself. Looking for a great real estate investment? Consider New Hampshire, which is ground zero for the Liberty Movement. Your first call should be to Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. He's more than just a real estate agent. He's your New Hampshire concierge. Where are the best places to live? Do you want farms, city, the burbs, or forest? Do you want a duplex or multifamily building so that renters pay your mortgage? There are homes in all price ranges in New Hampshire, and Mark can help with financing too. Invest in Liberty and property. Mark Warden can help. PorcupineRealEstate.com What if you want to hear the latest episode of Free Talk Live, but all you have is your phone, you forgot to download our archive, and you have no data connection? You can call our Listen Line at 641-793-0191. That's a long-distance number, so you may incur charges. If not, listen as long as you want. 641-793-0191. The Free Talk Live Listen Line, 641-793-0191. The latest episode of Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock is next after the news on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. A battle for a big state. I'm Lisa LaSara, Fox News. With 29 electoral votes at stake, both former Vice President Biden and President Trump were in Florida today. Biden in Broward County earlier telling the crowd the president doesn't care about Latin immigrants. Trump loves to talk. But he doesn't care about Cuban and Venezuelan people. 
He won't even grant temporary protective status for Venezuelans fleeing the oppressive regime of Maduro, who I've met with, and he's a thug. Biden had a second stop in Tampa this afternoon. The president was in Tampa earlier touting the latest economic numbers. This explosive economic growth is four times greater than what the experts expected. They expected a number that would be like 7 percent, 8 percent. The GDP accelerated by 33.1 percent in the third quarter. A major retailer removing guns from its doors temporarily. Walmart officials say rising tensions across the country have prompted the company to remove guns and ammunition from displays at U.S. stores. The company says the move is designed to protect customers and employees in the wake of recent isolated civil unrest. The company has pulled weapons and ammo from stores for brief periods of time in the past. The Wall Street Journal reporting guns will still be available for sale upon request. About half the stores operated by the Bensonville, Arkansas company sell firearms and ammunition. Rich Dennison, 